<laughs> Russians and Vietnamese. So mm -hmm. he's got the best of both gene pools. And and now uh, I think uh, Vietnam as a country is curbing their niche uh, in the boxing world now, right now. You're right. You're right, Alvin. Especially right now that, that after the pandemic we are opening up and there are more boxing events around Asia actually very interesting oh. yeah Liz they're really diversifying Vietnam's got some of the best fighters in Asia and they're just starting to enter out onto the world stage it's very good in this fight yep he's actually being hit hard and he's responding really well he's taking some huge shots in round number two and he keeps coming back mm -hmm. how do you like that shoulder roll by Yep? Yeah, great fighting yeah. instinct. There's some yeah. hard shots by Jethro. And I think this round, uh, Jethro Babusta trying to double up his uh, activity. You're right, with more power actually, yeah. right? And then if, if you could look the in the eyes of Babusta, <laughs> he's going <laughs> for the kill. Right, if looks could kill. <laughs> but I like what Hip is doing. It's actually targeting the body. Yeah, look at the close-up there. He's not breathing really hard. He mm -hmm. hasn't got big, wide eyes. I mean, I thought I had, I think, 50 amateur fights. This is approximately Hiep's third or fourth amateur fight. Oh if wow. I, in my third or fourth mm -hmm. amateur fight, or in my third or fourth fight, was fighting <laughs> a world or right. a world-ranked fighter who'd fought for a world title, I'd be mm -hmm. a lot more nervous than Hiep is. He's doing fantastic. As we see him there, roll and slip under a yeah. right hook. So 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 Ben, yeah, you think he is uh, passing the test so oh, far? He's yeah, he's passing the <laughs> test. He gets an A plus from me. Mm -hmm. I'm very impressed. We see Jethro land a hard right hook to the right. body off a hard left he hand to the head. Well, yeah, he's right? tough. He's mm -hmm. very sensible. Like I said, third or fourth amateur fight, and uh, keeping his elbows in, his chin mm -hmm. down, he's breathing still through his nose, calm and relaxed. That's coming from Bravo. Uh, Former world uh, contender, huh? Right. <laughs> Our number two ranked middleweight giving his approval. Yeah, yeah. I fought for <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah, WBA uh, world title in 2014. But mm -hmm. if I was in here, I was not doing this in my third or fourth uh, amateur fight. I'm very impressed with this guy. Same, same. Yeah. So but VSP Promotions has picked an excellent Vietnamese contender. And yep, he's doing the country very proud mm -hmm. at this point. But but what I like about Ben, he's very very humble uh, right. uh, boxer. Mm -hmm. He oh. he constantly help a uh, young boxer to to the make the oh, well. yes. Yeah. Mm. That was a great. Was that the second round, guys? Yes. Saw some yes. Beautiful action. Jethro mm. really loaded up, and he had responded with courage. will keep moving forward especially <laughs> when i know a fighter is fighting back oh, like hip wow. <laughs> i gotta be more aggressive yeah. how about you i uh, think ben? uh i predict jethro is really really actually going to try to seriously hurt Hip in this round mm -hmm. uh, i think he come out in the first oh round with some respect mm -hmm. and uh Hip didn't give him any back and just they've been trading hard shots through round one and two mm -hmm. you see jethro really uh lift the pace so i think jethro is actually going to try to stop Hip in this round because it's been an even competition. There's some good body shots there by Hiep. I actually like how Hiep is moving away and trying <laughs> to do like some lateral movements, yeah, not to stay in front of yeah. Jethro. We see Hui in the first fight. Uh, he liked the boxing experience, whereas Hiep's been uh, in the gym for years and years as a boxer. He's actually able to tie up at the right time, keep his elbows in at the right time, and even take the back of Jethro, which really denotes a lot of skill. We've got two minutes to go in round number three. Jethro coming forward, looking to put some serious hurt on Hiep. I think it could have been a, a head clash, maybe. 
Hard right hook to the body there by Jethro. Head, uh, head, <laughs> body, head by Jethro. Alvin, what, what do you think about uh, Jethro's confidence now, coming from a loss uh, against Tram Tramaine Williams? Oh. Uh, before that, uh, Hepe uh, did another very, right. very good uppercut on Pabustan. It's becoming really, really competitive between these yeah. two. This is fantastic. VSP Promotions has really picked an excellent contender in Kep. He's actually doing really well in the third round. It's mm -hmm. very difficult to see who's ahead in round number three. Obviously, Jethro has carried the fight overall, but in round number three, it's difficult to decide who's actually winning the round. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Right. Like like what you were previously, previously questioned, uh, Rika. I think uh, that bout against uh, Williams was uh, an... Uh, one week notice on on right. uh, Jethro mm -hmm. Papustan, and he did uh, quite impress it on exactly. by just losing by a decision. Yeah, mm -hmm. I actually watched that fight, yeah. and that that guy, it's Williams. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Williams is a world ranked prospect, yeah. and exactly. I thought personally that Jethro won the fight. Yes, but yeah. um, uh, I I talked to Jethro. I think he he got that one week notice to fight Williams. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was in the Philippines at that point in time, and I remember having dinner a few nights in a row with Jethro. He looked so depleted. Yeah. He didn't mm -hmm. know if the fight was definitely on. Uh, he just had to diet and get the, the very late call-up. So he mm -hmm. did excellent, all things considered. Exactly. Oh, that's another hard right hook to the body. And I'm surprised because Lay is accepting it, eating each punch quite well, actually. Yeah. Excellent. It's a good back and forth battle, which is speaking volumes for Hiep's courage. It's been back and forth in round number three. We're down to the fourth round of this interesting uh, exhibition bout between Hie Pong Lei and Jetro Pabustan. Alvin, what do you think will happen in this fourth and final round? <laughs> it's, it's, it's easier said than done, but uh, I think uh, Ma Hie must press the action on this fight um, and um, earn the respect of Jetro Pabustan. Right, and how about you, Ben? What do you think is, is the best thing for Lay to do in this uh, final round. Yeah, well, yep, he's got to keep, obviously, stick to the fundamentals, keep his hands up and his chins down. But uh, don't, there we go. That's what he's got to do. Dig down, come back. Uh, mm -hmm. The thing that you'd say Hui failed to do in the first fight, don't show his opponent too much respect. Plant his right. feet, stand ground, and try to bang. That'll keep the, uh, the offense from being too mm -hmm. one-sided. I actually like how Lay wrestles. Jethro and yes. tries to, oh. to remove oh. the. Yeah, wow, that was. <laughs> yeah. <a good laughs> this is fantastic. Yeah. These, both of these guys are throwing hard shots in the fourth round. Yep, maybe three or four amateur fights. Is trading blows with a former world title contender who might fight for the world title again next year. This is right. fantastic. Hard right hooks to the head and the body by Jethro. Yeah, he is. It's a really good wrestling tactic. Mm -hmm. He's taking the back of an experienced southpaw. It's very impressive. Yep, digs to the body. Jethro comes back. We see the action in close up here. Sweat flying off both fighters' heads and bodies. This has been a fantastic contest, this one. And I also like uh, Hep's uh, demeanor on this fight. Mm -hmm. I think mm. he is not uh, afraid of Jethro Papustan. Exactly. No, he's not afraid. Stoic. Very yeah. strong. That's the last thing you'd want to be in front of Jethro because you'd be tentative and you're going to you're gonna be hit more, actually, if you are tentative. Yeah. Quite, quite confidence uh, right. on, on, on Huang Wep. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, good oh. right uppercut to the solar plexus by Hiep. I think Pabustan 
feel that punch. Mm -hmm. Oh, a little bit of a, an accidental <laughs> lobo there by Hip. Jethro taking a little breather. Just a few moments to actually have him uh, recover from that accidental low blow. But all in all, very, very entertaining bout. Mm. Uh, last 30 seconds of this mm -hmm. fight. Let's see if they have some hard exchanges to win this fight. Impressive upper body defense by uh, Hip, actually. Look nice. at that shoulder rolls and the way he actually angles his body. Beautiful rolls, beautiful. I oh, I nice I jab yeah. there by Hip. Hip's doing an excellent job. He's actually said a couple of times in this fight, no, nope, you didn't hurt me, no, nope, you didn't hit me. Yep, he's uh, unintimidated. He he constantly doing that wrestling thing. Right, uh, um, right. Um, I think it's frustrating Jeff yeah. for a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. See there, he'll take yeah. his back. Tries to trap him into the ropes and then he pivots out. There what we a go. competitive fight. Wow, yeah. Second fight done. Mm -hmm. Jethro Pabustin, the silent operator right, versus Lee Huang Yep, yeah, Very exciting fight, I'm very impressed. There you go, some of the clips from that uh, previous fight between Hiep Huang Lei versus Jetro Pabustan. A very competitive fight, right guys? Yeah, it was. It was terribly exciting. It was give and take the whole way. And of course, uh, our awards are going to be handed to our boxers. He deserves that. He def deserves that round of applause for being such a composed and very, very skilled boxer. Amazing, amazing fight. Actually, if you didn't know that it was his debut, you wouldn't really think of that, right? Uh, yep, it's not, move, it's not moving like an amateur or what, or making a debut on this fight. He is quite impressive, and I think um, this experience will make him a better fighter. Exactly. So excited for Yep Huang Lei's next fight, actually. Being in front of a more experienced Shedra Pabusan will really boost your morale.
for John. All right, boxing fans, here we go with the first title bout for this, this evening. evening. Scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing for the WBO Oriental Ute Super Lightweight Championship. Introducing first on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, he comes into the ring wearing white trunks with gold trim from Bangkok, Thailand. And yesterday's weigh in, he scaled on the scales and a trim and ready 139, one quarter pounds. His professional record 12 victories, one defeat, nine big wins by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the current Thai super lightweight champion from Thailand, introducing Anusad Tong Lua. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He comes into the ring wearing purple drums with silver trim from Pyeongtaek, South Korea. As a professional, he remains undefeated in his campaign in the ring in eight fights. Eight victories, four big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the reigning, defending, undefeated WBO Oriental Youth Super Lightweight Champion, John Ho. The first title fight of the day for the WBO Oriental Youth Super Lightweight Defense of Chan Ho Sang versus Tong Leong from uh, Thailand. Yeah, both of these guys, Rika, very young. Uh, the champ, Chan Ho Sang, at 19 years old. They call him the Purge Boy and Anison Tong Luang. 18 years old, so both of these guys have got youth and vitality on their side. I met quite, quite, quite I'm very quite impressive. Uh, they, they have uh, a lot of fights, uh, right. despite of their age. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of experience. It's very interesting to see what will manifest. These guys are both young, full of energy. They're both on massive winning streaks. It'll be interesting. Both teenagers. You don't get that very often you in fights, guys. Right. Ben Chan Ho Song actually has eight wins, four of which are knockouts, while Tong Leong is actually uh, 12 wins, nine of which are KOs. Yeah, he had an unusual start to his career. His first fight he lost since then. 12 fights in a row, all win streak. Very impressive. It'll be interesting to see who can set the pace, back the other fighter up. I will not be quite surprised if it is Tiang Leong is a former Muay Thai fighter. Right, I, right. I'm, I'm reading between his stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the fact he's from Thailand. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. For some you, reason, you, yeah. You, you, you get me there, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Start Muay Thai and transition. Oh, good. Oh, uh, wow. That was we see some great hit. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was awesome. Really nice counters. Oh. We've got action, guys. Yeah. We've got action. Nice one to combination by Tiong Liang. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, Anderson's really got to be careful here, even though he's a fantastic fighter. It's a beautiful counter right hand by him. Uh, there's a tendency in Muay Thai fighters to keep their elbows kind of wide and, leave and be exactly. a little bit porous. Yeah. One thing I really, really observe about this fight both fighters are quite big. Exactly. Yeah, they're yeah. huge. They're tall, sinewy. Tong Leong actually has, uh, uh, sim they have similar heights, but Tong Leong has uh, long legs. Look at that. Yeah, that's a beautiful jam there by the time. And Song v being aggressive early on in this fight, trying to move in with that jab. This is really accurate pinpoint punching by the tie here. It goes mm -hmm. to the head and the body. I bet the most impressive thing thus far has been the challenger's jab. I, I think Tien Leong is beating Song to the punch in this initial round. Exactly. Beautiful counters, but... What's that? Is that a knockdown, guys? I is don't that think a so. knockdown? I think he got hit low. Oh, they're going to score it as a knockdown, I think. I think it was hit in the midsection. Not sure if it was the midsection mm -hmm. or the testicles. <laughs> yeah. Right, because <laughs> no, he's actually, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's Pointing a low blow. 
I wonder if a boxer uh, use the tie cap right now. Uh, <laughs> you're right. Uh, um, uh, I can't see for sure. Maybe Ben can can look if they're. <laughs> <laughs> if I can look. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, if, if, if it's no, because uh, yeah. in, in M MMA, I usually they they using the tie cap right now to to protect to protect it. Right. I don't know what uh, the boxer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure, guys. Usually that um that tight little small cup. We've got some chanting from the crowd. Right. But of course, uh, given the nature of that uh, incident, uh, the fighter is being given five minutes, if not, I'm not mistaken, to, Correct. to recover from that. <laughs> Ample recovery time. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're almost about to resume action round number one. It's been a really competitive round, number one. The champ, I'd say, Alvin, did you say the champ's probably forfeited this round thus far? And <laughs> the tie's probably taken it? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. No, a little more time. Maybe we'll cut back to the potential low blow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a low blow. It's definitely a low blow. Ben, um, uh, because, oh, you're right there. because you're a former boxer, Ben, uh, did you re experience such an uh, incident like that? No, to be honest, guys, yeah. I actually gave a couple of them. I was actually wobbled once, and I gave a little low blow just oh. between you and me, guys. <laughs> but so um, no, I never got hit low in... So uh, I don't think ever, actually. Yeah. Neither in sparring, an amateur fight, or a professional mm -hmm. fight. So, Ben, you are more a giver. Much yeah. more so the giver, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The striker <laughs> than the receiver in this case, yeah. Just yeah. a tidbit to you guys. It hurts as much for girls as it is for guys. Because I've been is that a receiver. A yeah, I've been, I've received some low blows, and the the pain is Horrendous. unbearable. Yeah, a fantastic topic we're on at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and it of is course, we resume <laughs> after that a, a small break. Uh, thirty minutes. Uh, thirty. Sorry, thirty seconds left. Twenty actually yeah. for this round. So the champ, Chen Ho Sung, or Purge Boy as he's known at 19 mm -hmm. years old, is going to look like he's going to come forward the whole fight, but he's got to be careful. Some really nice counter right hands and a beautiful right, like right up there right. by the tie. Uh, like Ooh. I said, this initial round, oh! Tang Liang is beating him oh. to the punch. Yeah, wow, that's good exchange. Beautiful. So I think mm. from that round one, guys... Uh, at long range, surprisingly, the tie is more effective, but he's got to be much carefuler on the inside, especially when uh, Chen Ho Song bangs to the body. Exactly. Those were uh, some effective uh, short hooks thrown by uh, Song, actually, on the inside, right? Beautiful hooks to the head and to the body by Song. But Tong Leong, like, you, like what you said, Alvin, was uh, countering pretty well. Look at that jab, right, Ben? Oh. Some of the action from uh, the previous round. Uh, two of a 10 round fight for the world youth title really interesting round number one i was impressed by the ties distance game but then towards the end of the round uh the champ chen ho song come back with some hellacious body shots which i think took the round what do you guys think who got round number one for me it actually uh, was a close round like mm. you said it was a good start by the tie but at the end the, the forward pressure of song is unmistakable actually. How about you, Alvin? I think uh, that uh, low blow uh, break the <laughs> momentum of right. Tiong Leong. Yeah. Uh, he is doing doing very great on the initial round. Right after that uh, low blow, I think he slow slow up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. So I think the chair, uh, the champ here, Purge Boy, has found a gap or a mm -hmm. chink in the armor, and I think he's going to be targeting close quarters, hard left hooks to the liver every chance he can get. I just want to ask uh, this thing with uh, a lot of uh, youth title uh, happening right now in, uh, in the world of boxing. What do you think about the progress uh, of having some numerous youth titles? Yeah, I think, it's, uh, I think it's 
Uh, I mean, there's a, it's a very convoluted sport. You don't want to add too many titles and yeah, interim yeah, titles yeah. and all that. But at the same time, as we can see from these guys at 18 and 19, it gives young guys that are years away from a world title something to aim towards and really motivate them. So on the one hand, it complicates things, but on the other hand, it really motivates young guys. Yeah. You are right. Give, give, give me a chance. It's a nice jab too from the tie. Impressed by the ties, actually, he... he Counters oh. quite well at the back foot. Oh, gosh. Yeah, he does counter really well. I noticed a beautiful counter right hand and some really nice jabs. I'm just worried about his defense. That right elbow has really got to be glued in because the champ, Purge Boy, he's really banging hard to that li the liver. I think uh, Tiang Liang is uh, feeling the pressure yeah. <laughs> of, of, of Song uh, on this round. Yeah, well, he's been hit hard in the liver and also in the balls, so he's definitely <laughs> feeling the pressure. <laughs> I think we are with that low blow, I think Tiong Liang has never been the same yeah, uh, I totally on this fight. Agree. Yeah, really good point, Alvin. Yeah. He had momentum in round number one, and then yeah. in the, the last quarter of that round, it seems like he lost something. A flurry by Tong Yong. In the final minute of this round, uh, while Song uh, wrestles his way out. And, and, and Song is uh, gaining a ton of confidence right now. Right. Nice little counter left hook to the body there by the tie. It's good to see him dig to the body as well. Mm -hmm. Ten round fight. Any hard shots to the body really paid oh, dividends. Oh, nice the fight left. Goes on. Beautiful right. Song. left hook. I like how Song actually comes in with a strong jab. It's a jab with mean intentions, yeah. actually. Yeah, he actually reminds me a little bit different body style, but similar to Gennady Golovkin. Yeah, Stiff, yeah. high jabs, and then really bangs on the inside of the mm -hmm. body. That's round number two over. season mm -hmm. I said to Anderson to try to change the momentum for a number three I think I, I think uh, in my own opinion um, I think uh, the Thai fighter must uh, fight in the distance and not, not to brawl with a uh, you champion mm. Yeah, they're both tall, they're both lean, they've both got muscles. But you can even see the body types right now. It looks like um, the Korean's the stronger fighter with the more authority in his punches. Uh, I, I think if uh, this fight uh, become a distant fight, mm -hmm. uh, the Thailand uh, fighter has advantage. But if it do get an all-out brawl, Song uh, will definitely have the edge. Right. Mm. And maybe the Thai fighter can bring some more problems by actually moving out of uh, Song's uh, punching uh, range after each combination. Oh, oh nice one too! Whoa. That's a surprising change of yeah. uh, position. Beautiful, long, yeah, beautiful long range right hand there. Let's see if you can capitalize on some new momentum. There's still two minutes to go mm -hmm. on this round. I suddenly remember uh, our great senator Manny Pacquiao with that right. one-two combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that first fight against Marquez. Yes. Beautiful yes. first round combinations. The, but the straight shots mm -hmm. dropped our Marquez. They bang hard to the body on the inside. But it looks like already Song's recovered. Purge Boy's ready to come mm -hmm. forward again. Exactly. But Good what, what Tong Leung uh, should do is beat him with speed. Mm. Because that's what he had as an advantage. Yeah. In the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah. From the outside, it was such an elegant one-two there. We saw, and mm -hmm. it really, uh, really did some damage to Song. Let's see if he can generate some more momentum. He moves his head and comes inside, throwing a couple of shots. There you go. It's just good to see. Mm -hmm. Now he's gaining confidence. Yeah. I'm speaking up, Tiong Liang. Mm -hmm. Beautiful uppers thrown by both boxers on the inside.
It seems as though both fighters want to show us that they can fight on the inside <laughs> as yeah. well. I think the inside was Song's domain until that right. beautiful one too, and now they're both sort of uh, planting the ground and saying, no, I'm the stronger fighter. It's going to be interesting to see. Oh! Wow, beautiful. The left uppercut again. The tie having some serious success in this right. round. Mm -hmm. I think he's taking over this round. Mm. Exactly. He shouldn't try to outmuscle Song, but instead move away at the distance and throw those beautiful long punches. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing at the end of this round the replay. That was such a beautiful, precise one, too. Oh, that's beautiful a hard body, body shot. Shots yeah. by Song. Nice body work by Song. Like you said, Rika, it's really important for the tie to get on the back foot and try to establish yes, range yes. again. He had Where momentum with that beautiful one, too. Yeah. But uh, on the inside, uh, the Korean's just too strong. Interesting round. A stronger round for uh, Tong Yung right there. I think I think uh, he awakened that young uh, Thailander right now exactly. with that run round. What a very impressive round mm -hmm. number three. Again, uh, this is for the WBO Oriental Youth, a super lightweight title. It's the defense of Chan Ho Song against uh, Tong Niung of Thailand. Oh. This is round number four of a 10 round bout. As we can see in the slow mos, the action replay, this has been back and forth this whole fight. Really good. Interesting, interesting use of uh, distance by both boxers. It's really a matter of, uh, like what they said, boxing is a game of inches. So it's, round four. it's really who uses distance well to their advantage. Totally, yeah, yeah. The three primary scoring components in a fight, number one, offense, number two, def defense, number right. three, ring generalship. Yes, you can control yes. the geography within the fight. Very, very well said there, Ben. Yes. Let's see what, oh, there's that counter right hand, narrowly misses. And a good way actually to educate the fans, right, Alvin, that boxing isn't just the, the number of punches thrown. This is this is a cerebral game. It's a, it's pure science, mm. actually. Yeah, violent chess, as they call right. it. Mm. <laughs> Both fighters dig to the body there. Very interesting to see if uh, either of these fighters can generate some momentum and really take over in this, the fourth round of a 10-round fight. And uh, and. And the younger song is uh, trying uh, to make this fight a little bit dirtier. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah, he is the stronger fighter. Yeah. He may not be as precise, but he's definitely the stronger fighter. Both of them uh, try to destroy their body. Yeah. Right. Like you said, Rico, it's just not the Thai's game. Tong Luang has got to box from distance. Obviously, it's harder said, yes. uh, harder done than said. But uh, mm. if he can generate some, some distance... And pot shot, he'll be well served. I mean, I, I, I think the Thai shouldn't try to mm. out muscle a strong uh, fight, uh, a strong uh, come forward boxer like Song. Yeah. I think he's uh, doing the oh. the good thing on the right now, uh, round number four. Mm -hmm. Uh, in round number four, uh, I mean in round number three, in round number oh. four. Uh, oh my! Oh hand. no! There oh, that's go. it. Oh no! I thought that was ruled. No, it's ruled the low blow again. Again. Uh, but yeah. but in my point of view, it's like a side to the body. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't know what the referee will uh, right. uh, call down, it. Yeah, he's down on his back, laid out. This is not a good sign for mm -hmm. Tao Ta Luang, Tong Luang. So hopefully the referee takes a point from a uh, song after that. Oh. That's oh the second boy. brutal low it, blow. It, yeah, it's, it's really damaging too. Low. Bang! Is it is, is it below the belt line? Yeah, that was. I think yeah. it was somewhere between on oh. and below. Yeah. Oh yeah, brutal. I but but yeah, that was below. Around uh, the crotch uh, area, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a yeah. little bit to the <laughs> side.
You got to wonder, guys. I actually uh, <laughs> volunteered some information that uh, when one of my opponents had some momentum, I, uh, I shot a little bit low. I wonder after he was seriously rocked in round number mm -hmm. three mm. if he's done that intentionally. Yes. Because he's obviously changed the momentum. He's laid right. out the tire. Mm -hmm. But but uh, in my point of view, it's like a right inside the belly. Like yeah, we'll see yeah, it a like slower. that. Oh. It's not a little bit. It's not actually so low. Mm -hmm. But again, of course, our it's our referees. Um, uh, decision. I just hope uh, this uh, very very good fight don't be stopped. Yeah, with let's hope it's not ruined. The crowd's oh yeah. into it. We're all into it. Uh, it's been back and forth. Both guys have been seriously hurt. Let's hope it's not ruined by a low ish or a low blow. Mm -hmm. I think the 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 rules is a uh, the injured fighter will be given a five minute break. Right. Yeah, then after like that, said before, yeah, five uh, the minutes. referee will make a decision about that matter. Well, he looks seriously hurt. This has mm -hmm. been like upwards of three minutes. Oh, here we go, oh. guys. We're back on. We are back. But according to the body language, he, he <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's certainly <laughs> something that uh, yeah. he... Uh, well, like you pointed out in the first round, Alvin, uh, the tie was doing really well. Yeah. And yeah, then he yeah. the momentum yeah. suddenly changed. What's going to happen now after that? That's uh, ten times as bad as the first one. I think um, Song was given a warning. Warning, warning. Mm. It's not enough. Right. Mm. Yeah. A warning's not enough after mm. that much efficacy. Uh, that was a really bad shot, and it's done some serious damage to the tire. Hopefully, he can recover. You oh, right. beautiful. Wow. Nice Extra counter. Yeah, yeah counter. they both countered with hard right hands there. We Maybe it's uh, yeah. angered the uh, angered the <laughs> tire. <laughs> Anderson looks like he's digging his feet in. He's going to try to hurt uh, Song after that. We are oh. certainly seeing some of the best youths, oh. <laughs> and uh, they are below 20, guys. I, mm. I'm sensing Song will not stop uh, banging the bodies of uh, mm. uh, uh, Tiong Liang. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, what a body by Song. Everyone heard that shot. That's the biggest body shot of the night thus oh. far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not liking the body language thus far of Anderson. He's really been hurt by those, uh, both the body punches and the right. low blow. Right now we can see Song really wearing out uh, Anu Son Tong Leong with body shots and uh, with the inside uh, work. So, uh, Rika, Alvin, we know what's being said in uh, the Korean Songs Corner. Keep moving your head, get on the inside, bang the body. What do you think's being said in Anderson's Corner? Maybe, maybe. We're on that blow, because, uh, because uh, not to be very funny about that, it's breaking the momentum of Apple Song every time a uh, song of punches uh, to the body. Distance because these things happen on the inside. I mean, round five. Like we saw in the last fight with Jethro and Kiep, like Kiep was able to tie Jethro up, turn him around, smother him. Yeah. Hopefully, we can see the tie Anderson do that in this round. He doesn't need to be on the inside, like you said, Rika, and trade hard shots because it's not to his advantage. start off at long range as they always do but it's only uh, only a matter of time I think before Song gets back to the inside and they trade mid-range and, and, and low uh, close range shots I, I think um, I, I'm a believer that uh, this full fighter will become a better fighter one day because I don't see Song doing more pressure just to corner uh, Tiong Liang I think he will be more effective in that way that's only my opinion. Right. No, I agree, yeah. That's a good point, Alvin. As for Thong Yong, I think uh, he should try to make a song overcommit because he's moving in with those heavy shots. I mean, you would want to him to get off balance and counter and move the momentum or swing the momentum to your side. Yeah. 
That's, I think that's one of the trappings of the Muay Thai style. He's got his hands up high, which right. is great, protecting his head. But you've got to deviate. You've got to stick your left hand out in front sometimes, and you've got to feint. I think uh, if the Thai Anderson can uh, deviate a little more from his game plan and start to make uh, Song guess, as opposed to just walk in with impunity, then we'll see uh, Anderson get a little more momentum. But we at this point, as we see... Anderson's back in the corner and Song's just banging to the head and banging to the body. There's yes. another one. You could sense that uh, Tiang Leong is trying to protect his body too. Yeah. Yeah, with that elbow uh, tucked yeah, in yes. really, really tight mm. to his body. Like I mentioned before, the third scoring criteria is controlling the ring. And at this point, Song is really controlling the exactly. ring. Exactly. Unfortunately, Tao Long's just going back to the ropes. From corner to corner. Right now, he's asking the big questions, and Tong Yong uh, is content answering. And and Tong Yong has, has a lesser activity on, on this fight. Right. I, I mean, and this round. Yeah, he is, and his body language. He's just not showing as much snap in his punches or confidence mm -hmm. in his body language either. Though he does land a good little right uppercut to the solar plexus. This is the tail of the fight. Oh, beautiful right uppercut there from the Thai Anderson. Snaps Song's head back. A little bit of wrestling from both guys. Nice to see. 15 seconds left in round number five. Good jab there by the Thai. You are right, uh, guys. Tong Yong should move out if he's cornered on the ropes. He needs to get out and not just move on a straight line. Totally, totally. Like we saw with Hiep in the last fight. Just wrap him up. He doesn't need to stay on the inside and uh, prove how much he is. Tie him up and uh, reposition himself back out in the middle of the ring. Rounds down, entering into the second half of this fight for a youth world title. We've got the Thai versus the Korean. It's been a pretty even match. It just seems like the harder, more hurtful shots have been primarily landed by Song. Purge, boy. But but uh, in my opinion, uh, the Thai uh, Tiang Liang uh, masa masa uh, trying to gain uh, some advantage uh, heading to the round number six. Have that surge of urgency uh, to pile up some uh, round. Exactly. Mm. Make it a little more difficult for Song to come to the inside, actually. Mm. Yeah, it's always harder said than done. Nice yeah. little lead left hook. Yeah. There, nice. beautiful combination. Beautiful by Tong <laughs> Yong. Just like I said it to make it, <laughs> to, to have that uh, urgency. Yeah, you yeah. predicted it. Yeah. Tong Lang comes back with some good combinations. Then he's got to get back, like you said, Riki. Get back at long range. Mm -hmm. uh, show his lead hand, stick it out. Bring in some feints and uh, establish distance and maintain distance. Good job there by Song. There you go. More of that actually, right? Mm. Maybe that that punch that uh, that Tiong Liang uh, um, misses uh, uh, the, the the job. He is not executing it very well. Maybe it's that uh, the context from all the the Thai Muay Thai fights and the Thai right. culture. He just mm -hmm. won't tie him up. He just exactly. says, let's bang. You want to get on the inside, I'll bang. Mm -hmm. It's not to his advantage. And I think he's the more rangey fighter. He must, yeah. uh, he must uh, uh, flick the jab every now and then. Oh, exactly. nice. There's a couple of good single shots. A hard left hook and then a nice flush right hand to the head. Tong Luang lands a couple of good shots. Beautiful left hand to the body. Though Song caught that one. Wow. wow. These are hard shots, hard <laughs> shots, guys. Uh, cer certainly, Tong Yong is very durable to have uh, outlasted <laughs> yeah. so I much. <laughs> I don't want to be on the receiving end of that exactly. body shot by Song. Exactly. And I like how uh, Song uses his elbow, actually. That's ring generalship. You're trying to bring Tong Yong 
where you want him to be. Yeah, shepherding in a sense. Exactly. Yeah. We've got one minute to go in round number six of what's been a really good back and forth battle. I think Song's had the momentum the majority of the fight, but the hardest shot was actually landed ironically by Tong Long. Tong Long has uh, taken advantage of the uh, first minute of the round number six, but, but Song, I think, uh, had advantage on the tail end of this round. Different, di right. di di uh, hard to score this fight. Exactly. Oh. Some hard shots. Here nice little seems, lead right here. Yeah, it seems that Song Yong does his best oh. work when he he moves first, actually, mm. and doesn't wait. Oh, that's not a good sign. Right. Uh, yeah, there's no knockdown there, but still, that's not a good sign. That's not a good, a good jab, sign. though, by the tie. Ooh, snapped back is the head of Tong Yong right there. End of round number six in what's been a pretty good back and forth battle with Song carrying the majority of the fight and hard body shots. Seven. We've got four rounds to go, guys, for this Youth World title at the Grand Ho Tramp Strip. VSP promotions. Let's see if the Thai can uh, convert more offense to the head and the body of his opponent. Because thus far, he's done really well, but he, he's just, uh, I think he's behind on the scorecards at this point. This, this uh, last four round could could be the decider of this fight. Mm. If I was in the Thai's corner, I'd tell Anison, you need to plant your feet in the middle of the ring, throw hard, long shots. If you're going to go backwards, make sure it's not to the ropes. Keep turning laterally. Yes. As like, uh, like what he's doing now, actually. Yeah, ironically. Before. <laughs> there you go. Maybe he heard us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Circling out before he gets pinned to the ropes. Mm. Yeah, the uh, nice little left hook there. Not a lot of weight into it, but a nice little flush shot. I'd also say, uh, Anison, you've got to be first. Don't just move backwards and create range. Strike first. As we can see there, Song the Korean's able to land first most of the time, and it's just not going to benefit Anison. He's got to sh shoot the jab first, make sure he scores. But I think uh, Song is quite impressive cutting the ring uh, on this exactly. round. Yeah, like I said before, I see shades of Gennady Golovkin in him. That is, yeah, yeah. You are right. The power, the, yeah. the cutting of the ring, those devastating body yeah, shots. Yeah, brutal body shots. He's just got that wide stance and that stalking kind of menace to him. He bangs the body hard. I think he's got the tie in trouble here. Anderson looking a little bit worse for wear. I, I think I really think a song is a hurting uh, Anison in the body shots. <laughs> I think it's very safe to say. It's yeah, he's hurt him a lot. It's not that the secret anymore. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, there's another one. And actually, it, it kind of wears uh, a Song Leung down when a song does that. He sort of like tries to wrestle him and tries to 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 pin him down. Oh, pin totally. His head down. Yeah, he bangs to the body and then he careens forward, slumps on top right. of him. So he's supporting the weight. Of the Korean, so it's twice as taxing. We see it looks like uh, Song's able to walk forward here with impunity. You can see in that lead right hand there by Anderson, uh, it looks like his energy's faded quite a bit. And he's uh, starting oh. to maul uh, Tiong Seung on this round. He maul, exactly. yeah. yeah. He's starting to maul him a little bit. Yeah, if I was Song now, the Korean, the defending champion, I'd really step on the gas. I probably 
do the same on what he done uh, on this round. So this for me, guys, is the first round where I've seen no snap or authority on any of the ties punches. Yes. Right. It's Look at him as they walk back to the corner. You can see the body language of the tie. He's uh, his head slumped over, his shoulders are hunched. We see their uh, song straight Second the tie along the round ropes. Round eight. A very animated crowd. Here Seconds out. Grand Ho Trama for Fortunes of War. We are here for the WBO Oriental Youth Super Lightweight Title Defense of Chan Ho Sang against Anusana Tong Yong. Oh. Uh, ben and Rika, uh, quite impressive venue. <laughs> right. uh, Gunho, mm -hmm. uh, Trump, and uh, Resort and Casino, and such a and we have a sizable crowd here. They are enjoying. They're very very responsive to what's happening in front of us. They're cheering. They're shouting. Yeah, everyone's into this. Uh, everyone's into this event. Everyone's into this fight. As I look around the room, this is a beautiful ballroom, guys. Yes, We're glued yeah. to the action. Mm -hmm. But uh, if they cut to the parameters right. of the. Uh, of the little arena or the ballroom, it's beautiful in here. Exactly, a beautiful venue for s for an explosive <laughs> event. And uh, I'm seeing uh, the the people um, enjoying their good food exactly. and a great boxing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna try some of that food soon. Maybe exactly. after this. Food uh, and boxing. What more do you want? Here in the Grand Ho Tram, wow, beautiful oh. hook by Tong Yong. There you go, entangled again. And uh, you guys, what do you think in these uh, scenarios when they we're in there entangled? Who has the advantage? Song is uh, having right? that advantage, uh, like oh. uh, Ben is uh, previous dead. Oh. oh boy, is that a head clash, guys? I think that's a head clash. Oh, he's getting a count, but oh, he's adamant. Yeah, yes. the tie's um. getting a count, but he's adamant. That was the head clash. And uh, yeah, in regards to your question, it's definitely to Song's advantage when mm -hmm. they tangle on the inside. If Song needed any more confidence mm -hmm. or any more of a booster in his energy, he just got it with a knockdown, which I think is a result of a head clash. Really, really, Song is uh, <laughs> see, see that, that he's the bigger fighter, stronger fighter exactly. on this fight. All power punches by Song. Rarely does he put yeah. out a punch. That <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. Right? That isn't meant to hurt Tong Yung. And we've heard it too. I've heard so many shots in this fight that have mm -hmm. echoed off the ribs of the tie. He's really exactly. digging into the body. He's just, uh, he's got the wider back. He just looks a little bit heavier and even, he's exactly. a year older, but he looks like mm -hmm. an, he looks like an older guy. It looks like a man versus mm -hmm. a teenager, actually, even though there's only a year between them. How ironic, uh, both, both either uh, 18 in and 19 years right. old. Mm. What were you doing when you were 19 <laughs> years old? Yeah, not <laughs> fighting for a youth world <laughs> title, right? Right. The crowd's into it. The mm. round's almost over. Song just mauling his opponent along the ropes there. Wow. A dominant round uh, by uh, Chan Ho Song, who g actually scored a knockdown in that round.
Yeah, head clash. Seconds out. Seconds out. Here we go, championship rounds, championship round nine. And we go, the tie comes out with a little more venom, a lead left hook and then a hard one too after a slap on the bum by his coach. Hopefully that can um, propel him to throw more offense. I think uh, with that slap, uh, he, he wake, <laughs> wake up uh, Tiong Liang right now. It looks like it, though we've seen this in multiple rounds thus far. He starts really well, Anderson, but uh, by the midpoint, he's on the back foot and he's getting pushed against the ropes by the relentless strength mm -hmm. of Song. Maybe the corner of Tiong Liang uh, told oh. Bing. Oh. oh! I think that's going to be the second knockdown. Uh, he's hurt now, guys. To the body again, Ben. Yeah. To the body. There's no disputing that one. Yeah. That was definitely a body shot. He gamely rises, Anderson. But uh, that's really got to take it out of me. He's been down in this fight yes. now four times. Twice from a legend. Oh, oh again. Wow, oh, wow, beautiful. And it's out. That's beautiful. it. Beautiful. He timed the right. What an impressive uh, ninth round. TKO Song. for Song. Yeah, Song defends his world youth title with an emphatic ninth round body shot based victory. This action has now come to an end, and I have your official time. After one minute and one second of round number nine, your referee, Surat Soikrachang, has called a halt to the contest, declaring your winner by way of KO victory, still undefeated, and still WBO Oriental Youth Super Lightweight Champion, Ho
hotel and casino as we continue with our action here in Fortunes of War, brought to you exclusively by Vietnam's number one boxing promoter, Mr. Kim Sangbom's Kaki Buffalo Promotions. Our action this evening continues with our fourth bout, an exhibition bout scheduled for four rounds of boxing in the lightweight division. First calling into the ring to the blue corner from the Philippines, uh, please welcome uh, the journeyman, Mark John Ya. Time at to the red corner from uh, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Uh, here is Phan Min Qua. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, our show today continues with our bout number four, scheduled for four rounds of boxing in the lightweight division. Introducing first on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, he comes into the ring wearing blue trunks with yellow trim from Cagayan de Oro City, the Philippines. His professional record, 31 victories, 17 defeats, 15 big wins by knockout. Known as the Journeyman, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Mark uh, J -J 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 John Ya. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He comes into the ring wearing black trunks. Tonight, he makes his professional boxing debut from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Known as the Riddler, ladies and gentlemen, here is Fun. Min Kua! And now for the instructions about referee. Very interesting fight. We've got uh, a few different big questions here. We've got uh, Quan with size and youth. He's going to be asking to Mark me. some big questions there. Can Mark tolerate no, the size no. and the youth? And also, oh, okay. Mark Yap Check will ahead. be asking Quan. Can you tolerate my experience, my precision, my body shots? Very interesting fight. And we go round to the round one. Round. And uh, Mark John Yap is a different, different kind of fighter. Right. Uh, to the John John Strada and Pabustan, Mark John Yap will uh, chop you 
uh, a bit by bit. Exactly. Uh, That's a word. Uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah, he's got so much experience. I actually resent the name Journeyman. As you know, exactly. in boxing culture, it usually means someone that's used up. Right. But Mark John Yap is still an excellent fighter. He just Far fought, from that. Actually. Yeah, he fought 12 yes, rounds yes. with Charlie Suarez, the best fighter out of the Philippines. And it was competitive the whole way. He's an excellent fighter. For some more context on Mark John Yap, he's uh, fought in Japan, lived in Japan. He actually speaks Japanese and he's beaten some of the best fighters yes. at his weight in the whole world. So he's an excellent fighter. And, and, and Ben and Rika, he is a former OPBAF right. bantamweight cha. Right. Let's lobby for a new uh, ring name for yeah, Mark John Yeah, it's a horrible <laughs> ring name. Actu actually, Ben, uh, we give him a, a, a moniker uh, the last time he fought in the Philippines. Yeah. Oh. Maybe maybe like a Mark uh, John, the rebirth. Yep. The rebirth, <laughs> because he's the been rebirth. talking about uh, yeah. his rebirth. An yeah. impressive uh, outing against Junior Raka, actually. Yeah, Junior Raka. Yes. Yeah, he has had a rebirth. I think VSP Promotions under Lim Song and Robert Hill yes. got a hold of this guy. Have organized him, in, uh, right. manufactured uh, rather than manufactured, directed him into some excellent fights, and he's experiencing a bit of a renaissance. Exactly. But I've been impressed thus far with uh, Femin Kwan, who's uh, landed a couple of really good shots, and he doesn't look overawed by the experience of Mark John Yap. The taller man is Kwan Min Pham, mm. and the younger, but Mark Chan Yap uh, relentlessly jabs that body. Yeah, it's a big question. Can uh, Femin Kwan deal with a body attack through the four rounds? Uh, thus far, though, I've been very impressed with Femin Kwan. He looks like, the, alongside being the taller fighter, he actually mm -hmm. looks like the stronger fighter. Look at his back. He lands a beautiful counter left hook, uh, right uppercut to the body there on Yap. And to think he, I think he is, is professional debut for Min Kwan. Exactly. It is. Like I said, it's a beautiful ballroom here, uh, and it's it's a big event, and it's being broadcast around the world, and obviously, a lot of TV in the Philippines. And Femin Kwan does not look bothered mm -hmm. by all this attention under the spotlight. Will he live up to his name, the Riddler? Will he <laughs> bring out the riddle <laughs> for Mark John Yap tonight? Yeah, I don't know about the Riddler, but um, he's certainly uh, showing that he's got youth and strength. If you told me you were going to have a professional debut against Mark John Yap, I'd uh, say my prayers, but he did really well in round number one. That was a close uh, close round to score. With, with, with that, uh, Monica, I suddenly remember my childhood, uh, Ben and Rika, the Riddler. Exactly. <laughs> oh, Brings back back memories, actually. We've got a cut there, not sure yes. if it's from a head clash or a punch, but Mark John Yap is cut over his right eye. Thank you guys. What do you think, without any uh, Pinoy bias, who do you think won round number one? Round number one. Of course, was the feeling out process. Yeah. It's, it's hard to tell. It exactly. really could go either way. But um, seconds yeah. out, round yeah, two. It's hard, actually. <laughs> Alvin should answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it down. Give him the uh, hard well, one. Maybe the one thing that Ming Kwan uh, have, he, he do not fear Mark uh, Mark Exactly. Mm -hmm. As we see there, uh, the final exchange in round number one. It looks like uh, when Mark John Yap sustained the cut. Femin Kwan controlling the range here in round number two that we see Mark Yap storm through with a hard right hook to the body and then a hard overhand right. Both of these guys very responsible defensively. They're trading hard hooks, but they're both catching each other's offense. Nice jab there by Yap. Now I'll bring back the question to you, Ben. Who did you think <laughs> won that first round? <laughs> I'd like to defer that question to Alvin as well. I'm not sure. I think exactly. uh, the first half of the round was probably Femin Kwan, mm -hmm. but uh, the second half of the round, probably the superior body work right. by uh, Mark John Yap. The jab to the body is certainly mm. a way to stop a charging Min Kwan. Uh, like we said, it's the first, it's the professional debut of Femin Kwan, but it's also an adjustment for Mark John Yap. He's used to 12 round world right. title fights, it's a fast little four round fight. Mm -hmm. So he's got to adjust as well as they tried hard hooks at mid-range. 
and and usually Mark John Yap is a slow starter. I mean, yeah, exactly. good point. In, 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 in a four round fight, you must uh, take advantage of uh, the early rounds. Exactly. Mm. That's a really good point, Alvin. Uh, he's a seasoned professional. He's definitely not a journeyman, but he's had so many fights. It's got to be such a big adjustment for him to start fast and only finish the fight within four rounds. But you would know, actually, Ben, because Mark John Yap has been fighting 12, 10 rounds for such a long yes, time, yes. and suddenly you have to fight four rounds, right? Oh, mm. That's a huge adju adjustment. Yeah, it's a very weird experience. Um, after so many fights, 12 rounders. Beautiful overhand right there by Yap. But I think it didn't quite reach the mark on the chin of Famine Kwan. Kwan holding. Interestingly, guys, I thought uh, Yap would be coming forward this whole mm -hmm. fight. But thus far, it's been Famine Kwan that's uh, controlling the center of the ring. Uh, because uh, Kwan, I think, am uh, very effective in throwing that comb combination. Mm hmm Right, there's always three punches mm. that come up. Oh, wow. Look at that. A lead Mark right John hand. Oh, was that a left hook to the body by yes, Yap that yes. landed? And it was. That's it. That's Mark John Yap going in yeah. for what He's seems to be. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. This is not a journeyman. These are hard quality exactly. shots here by Yap. Uh, all of a sudden, it's Mark John Yap coming forward, throwing some beautiful combinations. Mm -hmm. Femming at this point's only got a, the option to cover up. This is the famous uh, lingo in uh, our in the boxing: chop the body and the head will go down. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that's wow. always the case with Mark John Yap over 12 round fights, but uh, he's got to chop down the body in, in four rounds. It's a, it's a different assignment. Much better round number two there by Mark John Yap. So we can all agree, I think, right. Mark John Yap won exactly. that round number two. Seconds out, round three. Round number two. So, thus far, we're halfway through the fight. Very impressed with both fighters, but also very impressed with VSP Promotions for picking Feming Kwan. He's done excellent for his pro debut. And it certainly appeals to our uh, on-site uh, viewers, actually, here in the Grand Ho Tram, based on the responses, actually. It seems as though they're liking this kind of uh, matchup. Yeah, of course they would be. Uh, this is great stuff from both fighters. You see the acoustics in the ballroom. Every hard body shot is being heard all around the arena, around the ballroom. In a usual 10 round, round 12 round fight for March on Yap, this round three going to start going to wear you down. Exactly. <laughs> I can't think of a better analogy, but Mark John Yap sort of like takes you down little by little, sort of like mm. a termite, <laughs> <laughs> right? He starts chopping it down little by little until the base falls down or the foundation falls uh, down. <laughs> I like that analogy. Right? It's very apt. can't think of a better one, yeah. but... Incremental bit by bit or exactly. bite by bite and eventually uh, the tall tree timbers. But he hasn't got that option here. He's got to start fast, maintain the pace through four rounds. And am I seeing some blood trickling down Mark John Yap's face? I yeah. think um, I think Ming Kwan has uh, quite successful with doing that overhand right to Mark, Mark John Yap. Yeah, there's a nice little right hand there by Fan Ming Kwan. Uh, it's the left hook that Kwan's got to focus on because that's uh, that cut over the right eye of Mark John Yap is expanding second by second. Nice right hand there. Momentarily knocks Yap back into the corner. And Yap, like a consummate professional, 
circles back out into the middle of the ring. It would have been good if you would have seen that from the TIE fighter mm -hmm. in the last exactly. bout. Exactly. That's what Mark John Yap does well, right? He moves with his feet very gracefully, yeah. actually. I think it, uh, it is a quite deep cut for Mark John Yap. Mm. Is that from a punch or a head clash? Yeah, I was about to ask you guys. Do we right? know if that was from a headbutt or a punch? I think uh, with the signal of Mark, Mark John Yap, I think it, it's through the head clash. Right. That is a lot of blood we're seeing. And of course, our ringside physician is uh, checking. I think they're stopping the fight. Right. Oh, wow. oh wow. What a disappointment. That was a great battle. All right, that's marked the know. end of this contest. A big hand for Mark John Yap and Fan Min Kwan, everyone. And with that, uh, may I please call up into the ring uh, for the uh, presentation ceremony, Chief Operating Officer of the Grand Hotra, Mr. Craig Douglas, and also from VSP Promotions, Mr. Robert Hill, into the ring, please.
gentlemen, good evening and welcome back once again. The time now on the clock is 19 minutes past 8 o'clock, which brings us to bout number 5 of the evening here from the Grand Hotel Resort and Casino, Ho Tram, Vietnam. Another proud presentation brought to you by Vietnam's number one boxing promoter, Mr. Kim Sang Bom's Khaki Buffalo Promotions. Our night today will continue with our next action scheduled for four rounds of boxing in the lightweight division. Before we go into the introductions, let me call out both of our fighters into the ring. First, making his way to the blue corner at this time, from Tangerang, Indonesia, Paisal Panjaita. <laughs> way to the ring at this time from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Here is Win Van Hai. Gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for four rounds of boxing in the lightweight division and your referee in charge of the action from Korea, Lee jong Tech. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He comes into the ring wearing red trunks with black trim, officially weighing in at 132 one-quarter U.S. pounds. As a pro in his campaign in the ring, he remains undefeated with three victories. One big win by knockout. From Tangerang, Indonesia, Bapak dan Ibu mempersembahkan Paisal Panjaita. And as a put on across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with gold trim, officially weighing in, the same as his opponent, 132 one quarter US pounds. In his professional campaign in the ring, he comes in with a record of two victories, only one defeat, one big win by knockout from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Here is uh, Win Van Hai. And now for the instructions, referee Lee Jung Tech. No pun. Everybody stop. Black. I'm gonna no punch it. No punch it. Okay? You okay? Okay. So ready. 
But in Wing Van High, one of the best fighters at the Round Vietnam, one, scheduled for we four. We have an absolute warrior with an immense amount of technique. It'll be really interesting to see if the Indonesian, Paisal, can stand up to his uh, both his technical expertise and his firepower. Yes. One more, thank you. We last saw Haivan Nguyen against Gerald Into. It was a competitive fight, but Gerald Into edged him out a little bit. So it's interesting to see Haivan uh, uh, Nguyen here against someone like Paisal Panjatan, who's obviously a come forward uh, boxer. Watch that fight. I was live for that. It was a beautiful fight. I was so impressed by the rangy Southpaw's punch count and Gerald Into. Because uh, Wing Van High is one of the best fighters, I'd say, in the world right now. But Gerald Into was just, uh, from the start of the first round, he had such an aggressive, high octane punch count. He was able to put Wing Van High on the back foot. We'll see what uh, the Indonesian fighter, whose nickname is Geronimo, what he can do against Wing Van Hai. We can see here, Wing Van Hai, excellent upper body movement. Really defensively responsible, super strong, with a huge arsenal of punches. I understand uh, Ban Hai is a medalist also. Yeah, right. yeah correct, Alvin. He's won multiple um, gold medals at the Southeast Asian Games. He's an excellent fighter. One of my favorite fighters in the world right now. He's excellent. I remember in Hanoi, uh, Ben, uh, they had a quite good exhibition match uh, with Charlie Suarez. Yeah, yeah, that was a great fight. Charlie Suarez, who I'm sure you guys agree, is one also of the best fighters in the world right now. I can't wait to see that fight. But Van High, he's not as good as Charlie Suarez, but he's still an excellent fighter. And quite strong. Uh, and both of his hands could really hurt you. Exactly. Mm. When you talk about strength, Alvin, look at his body. He's just chiseled. There's not an ounce of fat on him. Both of these guys showing a lot of respect, very defensively responsible, both hands up, using jabs, mm -hmm. not winging in with anything crazy. Not over committing yet mm. on the first round. Oh, my! Oh. There's that world-class power. Wing Van High with a beauti beautiful counter left hook. Just, just I, I, I said it. The uh, Van Hein has uh, strong. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, you called it serious power. This little cut but under Van, Van Hein. Cut. Yeah, under his arm. Geronimo, not damaged, comes straight back and throws the first punch after the knockdown. So both of these guys have drawn a little bit of blood with Wing Van High drawing some serious blood with a massive left hook. I can't wait to see that on the replay between rounds, guys. I want to ask you guys where that blood from uh, mm. Ivan, uh, is, uh, what caused that uh, cut? You ask the hard questions, Rika. I'm <laughs> <Right>. not sure. <laughs> right? Alvin, did you see uh, by chance what happened? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably a two-way street. Either it did get cut I threw a head clash right. or a, uh, a jab by Pahitan. Mm -hmm. Let's find out as we see the ring card girl advertising round number two at the Ho Tram Grand Ballroom. I can't wait to see this massive left hook. Here we go. Bang. Wow, they beautiful exchanged timing. left hooks. Yeah, beautiful timing. Boom. That actually wasn't a massive punch. It was really mm -hmm. short. It was just like you said, Rika. Just beautiful timing. Credit to Geronimo. He fell down hard. That wasn't exactly. a flash knockdown. And he's back up and ready to exchange fire. Round number two. I think it's just the momentum of him moving forward. Yeah. Well, there's that timing. Yeah, Wing Van High picked the right spot. Not a lot of power, just timing. Which is so important in boxing. Like we said before, it really is a game of violent chess. Timing, timing. Exactly, timing, timing and the snap of that punch actually. It wasn't power, but mm. it was really that, that timing and distance. Yeah, what an introduction to Vietnam for Paisal. That was a massive left hook. Credit to him, he's back up and he's throwing hard shots. And he's not going backwards. He, sounds like he looks like he's recovered totally. Exactly, no trace of that knockdown from the first round. Mm. 
I'll tell you what, guys. Uh, going to that fight earlier this year against... Uh, Into. Into. Into yeah. Ger- Gerald Into? Gerald Into. Yeah, I think Wing Van Hyde was... Uh, he's an excellent fighter. I think yeah. he was surprised by both the firepower and the punch count. So, um, kind of like Mark Yaps had a career renaissance, Wing Van Hyde could have been the best thing that happened to him, losing that close fight, because it really renewed his hunger. Maybe he, maybe the length of into caused a problem on uh, on Van Hyde on that on that uh, fight. Yeah, the length and being a southpaw. But I think above all else, it was just Gerald Into's punch count. The punch count and incredible. also the power. Yeah, the power was up as well. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think Wing Van High expected that much or that lack of respect. Into just kept punching and punching. Speaking of Into, uh, maybe, maybe Gerald is watching us uh, right now <laughs> right. in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> watching uh, his former nemesis right now. A yeah. very stylistic fighter, actually, Win Van Hai. Yeah. He is. Beautiful poise, like I said before, very defensively responsible. Right. Picks his shots, consummate professional. And as you can see from his physique, always in shape. Good left hook to the body there by Wing Van Hai and a nice jab. Pretty respectful second round. Neither fighter's mm-hmm. gone crazy, though they exchange hard shots with a nice counter left hook there by Wing Van Hein. A nice one, too. The crowd's into this. Geronimo from Indonesia has been hit by some hard shots and he hasn't taken a backward step. He's still in this fight. Lands a nice little left hook there. Oh, I think we've got an eight count. No, maybe a cut. To my I'm knowledge, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Ben. Eh? I think Lee Van Hai is a gym rat, according to my sources. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he is. Uh, he is totally a gym rat. The guy mm-hmm. is 33. He's been fighting for, I think, almost two decades. Yes. Oh, wow. And uh, the last week in Ho Chi Minh City that I've been there, he's in the gym every morning yes. and every night, and he loves it. His vitality comes from his passion for boxing. You see a pretty big cut that's over Geronimo's left cut. eye. That's yeah. quite a big cut. Ugh. And not that the spot that you'd want, actually. <laughs> no. It's right above the, the eyelid. Yes. As we see the Indonesian corner look on Wari. Mm-hmm. Geronimo, a very skilled fighter with three fights, sustained a pretty deep gash over his left eyelid. Oh, okay. I've that never seen yeah. this before. I've never <laughs> seen this. <laughs> Unless they stop the fire. No, it's not going to stay on there anyway. Very actually, unconventional. Yeah. <laughs> and that uh, band-aid actually won't stick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I've seen uh, one of those like tapes, the, the, the thin kind of tape that you use to like close the cut. Yeah, but not during the fight, surely. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. during <laughs> the fight. It's quite bizarre in yeah. seeing that. <laughs> A feeble attempt to, to close <laughs> that cut, That's and we are back. <laughs> <laughs> feeble and misguided. <laughs> back in the action right. here. Good job, <laughs> Owen. <laughs> yes. This and probably, that incident could make our day, Ben and Rika. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was baffling behavior mm-hmm. by the corner there. I guess That's they're willing to try lesson anything. Lesson learned, right? Yeah. Never bring a band aid to <laughs> a <laughs> boxing <laughs> match because you will never need it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Boxing, um, and also Grand Hotram for, uh, Hosting our uh, portions of war and of course Cocky Buffalo, our promoter. Uh, shout out to, to our bosses, uh, Mam Kuku Elorde and uh, Marty Elorde of Elorde TV. And of course, Sir Robert Hill is in attendance to one of the biggest boxing events that will happen before the end of the year. It made me salivating. Uh, I hope uh, in the near future we could have something like this in the Philippines. Exactly. Mm. Beginning of the third round, jabs by uh, Panjatan.
Let's see. Let's see how that cut will uh, affect both uh, boxers. Hopefully not to stop the fight because we're getting good action from mm, these two yes. warriors. A little more hesitation from both. Yes, you think? yes. Yeah, they're showing their patience. And mm. I think um, both of these fighters have forgotten this is only a four-round fight. They've really got to get busy. Exactly. Maybe Van Haim trying to timing a very, very perfect uh, counter punch on mm -hmm. this. Uh yeah, you can see that. Uh, Van Hai, really good distance, nice yes. head movement. Keeps his hands up, but he's just waiting for opportunities. Pistols, maybe a little gun shy, just sticking behind conservative jabs, not really letting go yet. Panjai, I see Panjaitan is uh, trying to open up the guard of uh, mm. uh, Van Hai because Van Hai is, as you oh. said, oh, oh wow, oh, good oh, counter. Oh. Yes, yeah. that's it. That's the that perfect counter. That was a beautiful counter shot in between Paisel's yeah. shots. Van High. Oh, oh my! Wow. <laughs> beautiful. You can hear that echo around the uh, the ballroom. The right yeah. overhand is very yeah. deadly on Van High. Yeah. Oh, like, uh, that Lomachenko. upper. Lomachenko seems to decode his opponents and work out when to punch. I think exactly. Van High's done the same thing. He's got uh, the timing of Paisel, a.k.a. Geronimo. You've got interesting nicknames today. <laughs> <laughs> Geronimo and the Hanoi Hitman. The Hanoi Hitman. <laughs> Wing Van Hai. Good job there by Van Hai. Really showing his, uh, his scope. He's landed some massive shots, including that huge left hook around number one. And now he's just picking Paisel apart with beautifully timed jabs. I think, I, yeah. I, I think this time I, I see different facet of uh, Van Hai. He could uh, beat you with punches, and, and and that I think he's trying to set up uh, like yeah. that, but uh, oh, you are like right, that, Alvin. Exactly. You are so beautiful. Right. <laughs> I don't want to be, want to be a fortune teller, partner. Yes. <laughs> it looks like you are. You just call that, oh, and uh, uh, a little paisalis. Yes, no, uh, they've called it. There we go. Yeah, the legs are the legs oh, wow. say it all. Alvin the fortune teller. Right. That was a massive but overhand so right by Wing Van High. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, good effort by Paisa, but uh, I, uh Van it was just too much, too fast. To uh, the punches were just too much. The timing was Ladies and gentlemen, for this official presentation. May I please call Win into the Van ring of the Vietnamese Boxing Organization, amazing, Mr. Song Lim, comeback and also from, from VSP Promotions, Mr. Robert Hill. Tommy. Wing Van High there wins definitively. Unfortunately, Price leaves here with a concussion, but he also gets a lot of experience. Lim Song is here to uh, be part of this awarding for uh, Wing Van Hai. And of course, uh, Robert Hill is also here to uh, add over our flowers.
had on that happened on the middle of the ring, <laughs> but the same punch. Same punch. <laughs> featured bout of uh, the evening. This is scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing for the Waken IBF Asia Junior Lightweight Championship. But first, let's call out both of our fighters into the ring. First, from Indonesia to the blue corner, here is uh, Defri Palulu. making his way to the red corner into the ring at this time from the Philippines uh, Charlie Kings Warrior Suarez
Ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed with the official introductions for this next cool feature bout, let's first get to know the officials who are in charge. Introducing first your three judges scoring this bout from ringside on a 10-point must system R. From the Philippines, Gil Robiego Ko. From Korea, Charlie Choi. Also from Korea, Lee Jung Tech. Supervisor in charge of this bout from Korea, the Korean Boxing Commission Secretary General, Mr. Aaron Jong. Referee in charge of this action, also giving instructions after the introductions from Thailand, World Championship Referee Sura Soikrachang. All right, boxing fans, here we go with the co-featured bout of the evening, live from the Grand Ballroom, here in the Grand Resort and Casino, 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant IBF Asia Junior uh, Championship. Introducing first on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He comes into the ring wearing multi-colored trunks from Tangerang, Indonesia. He weighed in at a trim and ready 129 US pounds as a pro. He comes in with a record of 25 victories, two defeats, two bouts, even 14 big wins coming by way of a knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the current WBC Asian Boxing Council super featherweight champion known as the Unseen Hammer, introducing Defri Palulu. And as a put on my right, fighting out of the red corner, he comes out of the ring wearing black trunks with combat camouflage trim. From Metro Manila, the Philippines. He weighed in at a trim and ready 129, one half pounds. Here is a 2016 Rio Olympics athlete with an undefeated professional record of 13 victories, seven big wins by knockout tonight. Seeking to defend his unblemished record in the ring in his 14th professional appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the current WBA Asia Super Featherweight Champion from the Philippines military. Introducing uh, Private Charlie King's Warrior, Suarez. And now once again for the instructions, referee Surat Soikrachan. So the energy mm -hmm. in this uh, arena is palpable. I can't wait for this fight. Charlie Suarez right now is my favorite fighter in the okay, whole world. Do I think he's okay, sensational. Say, stop, so stop. you can frame this fight as the battle okay, of Asia. You've got, from my perspective, certainly the best fighter from the Philippines in Charlie Suarez mm -hmm. against the best fighter from Indonesia in Defri Palulu. Very Round interesting. One. Scheduled for 12. Let's see what transpires. Have we got any predictions from the Alori TV team? <laughs> wow, that's that's. But as far as <laughs> I know, this uh, fight is a years in the making uh, mm. before really, really be it, it happening right now. Right. Yeah, that is a great point, Alvin. This fight was actually scheduled to take place just before COVID uh, mm -hmm. emerged. It'd be very interesting to see uh, these two guys finally engage in hostilities. Now, Charlie Suarez, typically, I think out of his 13 fights, six have gone the distance. He's really, really good at winning on points, though I predict personally, maybe a knockout and not even late. And but actually, he's had uh, mm. some uh, TKO wins. Mm. One that was notable was against Tom Jun Mangu. Yes, yes. Right? Before I <laughs> yes, that, that, that's a very, very impressive TKO win against a, ha a fast rising uh, Filipino super federal. Yeah, Mangabat's a beast. Uh, to put it into perspective, how much prowess Charlie Suarez has, he's had 13 fights, six of which have gone 12 rounds, and I watched all of his fights. I don't think he's lost more than a round or even two Exactly. In hundreds and mm -hmm. hundreds of rounds, this guy is excellent as they touch and gloves. Add, and add to that, uh, Ben, he is a very, very decorated amateur uh, standout. Mm. You are right. And of course, Defry Palulu has 25 wins, 14 of which are knockouts. Uh, he has a nickname, Unseen Hammer. 
are we gonna see the unseen hammer yeah. tonight? I think Charlie uh, is quite likely to see it in spite of Jeffrey's uh, fantastic skill set. Jeffrey's actually only lost once in the last eight years, so both of these guys have just got victory and success coursing through their blood. It's very interesting to see who'll drew the f who'll draw the first blood. Jeffrey from Southpaw with those uh, unexpected angles and unexpected punches versus Charlie Suarez from Orthodox. And we've seen thus far in the first round, sorry, Alvin, uh, yes. Charlie Suarez coming forward. And if my memory served serve me right, I think Panlulu also fought uh, one time in the Philippines against uh, A.J. Banal. Oh, did he? Yes. And what went down in that fight? What was the outcome of that fight? Um... <laughs> Testy, yeah. You're, you're trying to <laughs> chronology. Test your memory. Yeah. Well, it's news to me that I've been forward, so. You know, Ben, you're so tricky. <laughs> <laughs> like the unseen hammer. I give the you the unseen, unseen questions. The unseen hammer, exactly. Also oh. faced another Filipino twice, Ivor Lastrilia, in which he both won via technical decision. Yeah, all right. So he's an excellent fighter. We've seen a couple of lead right hands thus far from Charlie Suarez, though neither fighter has really stamped a definitive uh, illustration mark on the fight. <laughs> round number one in the books. Pretty close round. I think Charlie Suarez just on activity, if mm -hmm. nothing else. But not much in it whatsoever. Connection rate, actually. Yeah. Those those jabs uh, landed for Charlie. A little bit of uh, missed shots by uh, Defry Palulu. Defry Palulu. Madame Kuka Yalorde there, watching on from the crowd. She's going to be very happy with Charlie Suarez's activity in the first round. The Unseen Second Hammer down, round and the two. King's Warrior. Round number two of a 12-round world title fight. I think, I think Charlie, one punch that uh, must uh, look out is the very devastating uh, counter right by Deep Raya Panlulu. Yeah. A counter right hook. Yeah. Fortune teller, Alvin. We just saw <laughs> one there. <laughs> Narrowly missed. You are right. It's surprising to me, actually, that uh, Defri Palulu is taller the taller man because right now it, it seems as though they're identical in height yeah jeffrey palulu staying crouched not really giving away that he is actually taller both fighters known for being compact fighters very sensible with high hands thus far it's been a battle of the jabs and long range long range shots I like how Charlie pivots to the right, but just enough actually to avoid the punch mm. and to counter. I've seen already, although we're only one minute into the second round, Charlie Suarez's punch count has suddenly really increased. I think uh, one of his keys to victory, which he always does in fights, is generate serious momentum. And the, and the right. opponents typically can't manage the punches, the angles and the footwork. As we see now, Charlie Suarez has Palulu backed into the corner. Though Palulu circles back out into the center of the ring. He, uh, Charlie is trying a closer distance right now. No, right now. Mm. But uh, like I said, that counter right oh. yes. is very it's little. There. Mm -hmm. yeah, beautifully timed lead right hand there by Suarez as the, uh, the unseen hammer walks in. Suarez letting go with a couple of combinations mm -hmm. with Lulu's back on the ropes. Lulu wants to get off those ropes. Safe to say, don't let Charlie gain that uh, momentum because once he's got it, he's unstoppable. Totally. The door closes if you let Charlie Suarez mount a serious off offense. Right. In in one of the interview, uh, Defray Panlulu uh, uh, told the reporter that Charlie Suarez has no power at all. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this report. Uh, right. It's mm -hmm. funny. The Indonesian is very confident that uh, exactly. Charlie Suarez is a good fighter, but I think they rate him as a, a little bit of an amateur, one-trick pony. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see how uh, Jeff Defri Palulu rather deals with Charlie Suarez's exactly. power, which we're going to see 
because uh, as you know ben and uh, alvin is with speed comes power too right so you see it there in a nice little left uppercut straight right hand by suarez palulu staying patient there's that hard right hook again alvin by palulu narrowly misses suarez shepherds Jeffrey Palulu back into the ropes. This is where Jeffrey doesn't want to be. Mm -hmm. The unseen hammer, though, with his hands high, catches all those punches. Good defense thus far from both fighters. And round number round two number over. Two. So what did you guys think of that round? Uh, I think it's a little uh, round to sort of like both uh, boxers step up a little from a feeling out the uh, first round. Yeah, so who has the advantage as, at this point? Well, I'd say um, neither fighter has a massive advantage thus far, but uh, Rika, you can see that Charlie Suarez is definitely going to set a pace, and I think in the next couple of rounds we're going to be uh, we're going to get a glimpse into the arsenal and the experience of Jeffrey Palulu. See if he can deal with the punch count and see if he can time uh, Charlie Suarez. And you, Alvin? I just noticed something. Um, I think the, 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 the fighter who has a better gas tank will probably win this fight. Right, because it's, it's actually a, not just a physical battle, it's a mental uh, uh, mental battle when you're in front of Charlie Suarez. Yes. You have to figure him out. And at the same time, Charlie... Oh. Oh. Just when I was... What? What just happened? I Maybe think the uh, referee waved it off. Some sort of yeah, the referee waved it off, but I wonder Ladies why. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest has now come to a halt due to our fighter Maybe in the blue a, corner. A, that looks like a, on the right hand side of his nose. Due to one of the shots that he took in the oh, earlier rounds. Impaired. We shall wait to see what the officials will yeah, declare for this knows. fight. Oh my! Is that is that a result that we like? <laughs> oh, wow. It's an early, early. Uh, I would have wanted this to go further, but. It uh, seems as though, you know, eye injury is, is very, right. very mm -hmm. dangerous in the box. All right, so it uh, seems like we have the official results. Uh, before we go ahead with the official presentation, may I have in the ring CEO of the Grand Hotram, Mr. Walt Power. Uh, on behalf of VS Promotions, Mr. Robert Hill, and also the Vietnamese Boxing Organization Chairman, Song Lim, in the ring, please. Warriors seem to have uh, gained another belt tonight. We see right there Charlie Suarez with Coach Delphine Bowles celebrating. Wow, that was. Actually, that short uh, one, uh, first and second round, we actually saw why Charlie is one of the top boxers, if not in the Philippines, of the world. Right, Ben? Totally, yeah. You said was, he's your favorite. Uh, yeah, he's my fight, favorite fighter boxer. in the world. It wasn't a spectacular ending, but it was still a definitive ending. Charlie Suarez, he can do everything. He can land beautiful hard bombs, or he can just pile on shots and uh, end fights like that. Just amazing instinct, actually. Just amazing instinct from uh, Charlie to actually mount that the TKO victory. Wow. There we go. There you go, Yora. New IDF Asia Junior Lightweight, the champion. Private Charlie Suarez showing some respect to Jeffrey Palulu. Yeah, that's another reason I love this guy. This is the other reason he's my favorite fighter. He is such a sportsman. I think he's 33. He's just got so much youthful energy. It's infectious to be around. And actually, to those who are uh, watching, uh, Charlie may be vicious inside the ring, but outside, he's such a 
such a great great person he's very very he's an amazing amazing uh, guy he's just very very all it's just wow a good fighter a good man a very very uh, yes yeah. a very good role model actually yeah. excellent boxer a christian member of the philippines military right he's a fantastic representative for the filipinos And again, we would like to thank our sponsors for tonight. The Grand Ho Tram Strip here in Vietnam. KTO VSP Boxing. And of course, uh, Cocky Buffalo is our uh, promoter for today. For Fortunes of War. Fortunes of War. Right. And with me, of course, this is Rika Baby Dynamite, Aquino, uh, Ben, uh, Cole, Right? Did I say it right? Ah, oh, perfect, perfect. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. And of course, Alvin S. Go from Real Fight PH. I did not expect that ending. I did not right. expect that ending. I'm perfectly honest. I did not expect. Yeah, neither did I. I don't think any of us did. More so the unseen hammer. That was the unseen injury. Right. We didn't even see what caused that injury, actually. Yeah. Obviously, it was uh, the... Uh, <laughs> The nightmare, Aljum Pelesho in the house. Followed by the Chief Operating Officer of the Grand Ho Tram, Mr. Craig Douglas. Followed by Im Ga Young, the Marketing Manager here at the Grand. On behalf of VSP Promotions, calling into the ring, Mr. Robert Hill from the Vietnamese Boxing Organization, Mr. Song Lim. And also CEO of Kaki Buffalo Promotions, Mr. Kim Sang Bum in the ring, please. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the fabulous, the grand uh, resort and casino here in Ho Tram, Vietnam as once again, Vietnam's number one boxing promoter, Mr. Kim Sang Bom's Kaki Buffalo Promotions proudly presents to you an evening of championship boxing. And of course, we're proudly sponsored by the Grand Ho Tram. So we before we proceed with the official introductions and the grand pageantry for our main event, may I please have the honor of passing the microphone over to the CEO of the Grand Ho Drum, Mr. Walt Power, to say a few words. A big hand for Mr. Walt Power, everybody. Thank you. Thank Take you. care, Walt. It's my pleasure to uh, welcome all of you to the Grand Ho Tram tonight. I'd like to start by thanking the provincial leadership of Barrio Vang Tao. Without their su continuing support over the last few years, we wouldn't have success like, like we've had. Tourism is a big part of the future for Barrio Vang Tao. 
and all of you can expect more and more events like this for us to contribute to that effort. 이 바리아봉 따울을 발전시키는 데 있어서 투어리즘이 굉장히 중요하다고 생각합니다. Du lịch là một yếu tố rất quan trọng đối với tỉnh và những sự kiện như hôm nay sẽ đóng vai trò quan trọng. I'd also like to thank Mr. Kim in Cocky Buffalo, w, WBO, IBF, the Vietnam Boxing Association, uh, VSP. 지금 말씀해 주신 모든 기관들에 감사하다고 전해 마, 말씀해 주셨습니다. Tôi xin được cảm ơn ông Kim đại diện của Buffalo uh, và xin cảm ơn WBF. IBO, VSP và Hội Hiệp và Võ Thuật của Việt Nam. But most importantly, I would like to thank the athletes. When you come and see this show tonight, these world-class athletes, we all see the lights, the ring, the loud music, the beautiful women, the video screens, but we don't see all the preparation that goes into this type of event on behalf of the athletes. 그리고 무엇보다도 오늘 제일 감사 사장님이 감사하는 분들은 오늘 와주신 선수들인데 사람들이 이 복싱 경기를 보러 와서 여러 가지 라이트나 뭐 아름다운 링 레이디들이나 뭐 사람들의 함성이나 이런 건 보지만 그 선수들이 여기서 이런 결과를 내기 위해서 얼마나 연습을 하고 있는지는 아마 다들 모르고 계실 거라고 말씀해 주셨습니다. 또 신작 배그 라이 감은 된 영화 시야 탐야 À, ngày hôm nay chúng ta đến đây chúng ta sẽ thấy những cánh đèn những uh, đèn màu những người đẹp cùng tất cả mọi người nhưng ít ai biết được là cái sự công sức bỏ ra từ những võ sĩ tham gia. We don't see the athletes waking up at 5 a.m. to getting their road work in. We don't see them training for six, hour, six hours a day, seven days a week. We don't see their endless endless sparring. Everything that goes into this event. If it wasn't all of these athletes that come into this ring today are all world class athletes. 그래서 오늘 와주 선수들이 매일 새벽 5시에 일어나서 매일 6시간씩 하루도 빠짐없이 이렇게 경기를 해 해줌으로 인해서 오늘 이렇게 월드 클래스의 경기를 마련해 준 것에 대해서 다시 한번 너무 감사하다는 말씀을 해 주셨습니다. 좀다 không hề thấy được cái sự thức khuya dậy sớm của các võ sĩ và những cái thời gian người ta phải luyện tập có khi đến hàng 6 ngày, hàng 6 giờ một ngày. Và thưa các vị, quý vị, những võ sĩ tham gia trong trận đấu hôm nay đều là những sĩ nổi tiêu, có tiêu chuẩn trên quốc tế. Thank you. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a big round of applause for the CEO of the Grand, Mr. Walt Power. And now we'd like to present to you a special LD, LED presentation uh, up on the screen. So let's turn off the lights and feast our eyes with a special presentation show. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, after five undercurrents and one co-main event, the time has now come for us to witness the main event of the evening. Another proud and special presentation brought to you by Kaki Buffalo Promotions. Before that, let's call both of our fighters into the ring. First, making his way to the blue corner at this time, from the Philippines, here is uh, Arnel Baconahe.
at this time from Vietnam. Here is Hong Tin Qua. Productions, may I have your attention, please? In honor of the participating nations for this next main event, we'd like to play the national anthems. So please rise, everyone. Please be on your feet. Please rise as we first play the national anthem of the Philippines, Lupang Hinirang. And now the national anthem of the host nation, the national anthem of Vietnam. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You may now please be seated. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the three judges assigned to score this bound from ringside on a 10-point must system are from the Philippines, Gil Robiego Co. From Korea, Charlie Choi. And also from Korea, Lee Jung Tech. Your supervisor in charge of this next bout from the Korean Boxing Commission, Mr. Aaron Ja. And the referee in charge of the action at the sound of the bell, also giving instructions and ensuring the safety of the fighters from Korea, referee Kim J. Hun. All right, boxing fans watching us live on TV and a live stream on internet, it's now time for the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Asia Lightweight Championship. And now, live from the Grand Ahodrum Resort and Casino, 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's Kepke Buffalo Boxing Time. Vietnam, are you ready? No, I can't hear you. Are you ready? Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He comes into the ring wearing blue trunks with yellow trim, officially weighing in 134 pounds, bang on. From Metro Manila, the Philippines, ladies and gentlemen, here is the former WBC Asia Silver Featherweight Champion, uh, introducing uh, Arnel Bakonahe. And his opponent across the ring, on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with silver gold trim, officially weighing in at 135 pounds. His professional record, nine victories, one defeat, one bout even, four big wins by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the number one ranked lightweight in Vietnam, the reigning, defending, IBF Asia lightweight champion, introducing... Hong Dean Kwan. And now once again for the instructions, referee Kim Jae Hoon. We have come to the end <laughs> of the fortunes of war, but of course before uh, we begin, we would like to thank our sponsors. Lorde TV, Robert Hill and VSP Promotions and Cocky Buffalo Promotions and of course the Grand Hall Trump. And here we go. This is a big fight. A massive fight for both of these guys. This is Arnel's first world title shot. Arnel Bakanahi, the silencer versus Din Hon Kwan. Round tall range one. Southpaw. I'd just like to point out guys, the last two opponents of the Vietnamese fighter, Din Hon Kwan, both Filipinos. This you is his third right. Filipino in a row. And those were actually good fights, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, one very close the, fights, right? Exactly, especially the one the with the jewels. Yeah. yeah. And nice. he get the, the vacant title again fighting uh, Delmar Pelio. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, Arnel Baconaje comes here with a record of 15 wins, 11 of which are knockouts and five losses, while... Uh, Kwan Hong Din has a record of uh, nine wins with four knockouts and one loss. The first thing I notice here, guys, is the size difference. Din right. yes. Kwan is massive compared to Arnel. You are right. It's the height and the overall composition of his, his body. It's yeah. just he's a bigger, he's the bigger man here. Yeah, much bigger. He's taller and he's wider. But, uh, as we've seen in multiple fights from the silencer, uh, Arnel Bakanahi is just a pinpoint punch with power exactly. and great defensive skills. Deceptive to look at the size, but uh, looking at his wins, 11 knockouts out of 15. Mm, the guy can punch. He's got brilliant timing. I held the pads multiple times this or last week. Mm. Arnel, as we see him land a right uppercut, left hook, straight right hand. The guy really can put people to sleep in spite right. of his size. And, and, and to add to that, don't sleep on Hong Kwan. He's like an <laughs> assassin. Exactly. <laughs> looking for a slight, slight uh, opening. Ready to go in for the kill is uh, the Black Hawk, Kwan Ho Do Hong Din. <laughs> so you see the size difference there, but it works to Anil's favor. He's able to get underneath the majority of those punches. The tidier, sharper shots I expect to see from uh, Arnel, but the bigger shots right. uh, with the more mm -hmm. weight from Don, Din Hong Kwang. Round one and a lot of action has already <laughs> been given mm. by both boxers. Oh, nice right hand there by Arnel. Yeah, this is probably the most action-packed uh, mm -hmm. beginning to a fight thus far. Exactly. Ironically, this is a 12-round fight. So it's a really good indication of what's to come. Both of these guys from the get-go for the world title willing to exchange bombs. Arnell with a nice overhand right. Oh, another nice shorter straighter right here, man. A good jab by Arnell. Oh. Leaping a hook by Arnell. Yeah. Missed. Yeah, and a nice little check hook there by Arnell. Arnell boxing beautifully. 
Exactly. Beautiful head movement by Arnell yeah, right there. A nice right hand there by Din Hun Kwang at the end of that round. Pretty good round, pretty close. Uh, but Arnell with right. the sharper shots towards the end of that round. Exactly. Seconds out. Round two. Guys, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'll just make the uh, the prediction. You can jump in if you want. But I'm picking Round two. mid to late stoppage by Arnell. I think the uh, the more weight and the more power comes from Din Hun Kwan. I think he's going to slow down through this fight, and uh, Arnell's going to catch him with some really well-timed shots. Let's ask Alvin first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say something. Uh, I think Arnel Bakuneha must try to test the body of Ho uh, Hong Kwan. Exactly. Um, and uh, regarding the prediction is, um, <laughs> I just leave it that way at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting <laughs> thoughts, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe if Arnel can land some meaningful body shots, he might slow down the, uh, the forward charge of Din Hun Kwan. Gosh, there's such a size gulf between these two guys. Exactly. Not just the weight, but the mm -hmm. length of our, the Viet's arms. They look so much the bigger than our nose. You are right, because uh. it isn't so much of a height difference, but it's the wingspan that's actually yeah. surprisingly... Um, uh, Hong Kwan has the advantage. Yeah. Ironically, uh, the only landed punch that I've seen thus far in this round, a beautiful jab by Arnell, who's showing some really good offensive... Um, Pinpoint shots and a uh, beautiful head movement. Exactly. He kind of reminds me of Canelo quite a bit. He's got that really relaxed sort of waltz backwards and forwards style. Seldom getting tagged, but he never really looks like he's worried. Exactly. And, and one side light about uh, Hong Kwan, uh, he did uh, have that uh, training alongside with Manny Pacquiao or back in General Santos. That's right, that's right. Must nice have learned job, yeah. some few pointers from our Pambansang Kamao in the Philippines. What better way to learn a uh, Filipino fighter by yeah. right. going to the uh, country that... Mm -hmm. In General Santos City, the, the capital, or one of the capitals actually of boxing. Yeah, we can see one of the focuses emerge for Din Hun Kwong as he throws some hard right hands to the body. He's probably going to look for some body shots and then try to bring some hard right hands upstairs. But Arnell seems to be <laughs> taunting him to move forward. Yes, yes. A little bit of Manny Pacquiao there. Right. <laughs> Both hands up, bring it on. Even the facial expression, <laughs> actually. Classic Manny Pacquiao. From the silencer, Arnell Bakunahe. 30 seconds to go in round number two of a world title fight. The defending champion, Din Hun Kwang, looking much bigger, but at this point not more effective. And say uh, in a close fight thus far, mm. Arnell has definitely uh, landed the sharper shots in round number two. The jab is quite effective for mm. uh, Bakunahe right now. Mm. Good distance there by Din Hun Kwang. But. <laughs> Beautiful head movement and sidestepping there by uh, Arnell Bakunahe, right. the silencer. Rika uh, and, and Ben, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Arnel is trying to be play possum <laughs> yeah. exactly. and, and trying to set up that counter.
really getting tagged by any yeah. of those shots, but the judges will score that kind of activity in Round favor three. of whoever's throwing the punches. So one else got to be careful. Mm -hmm. Aggression definitely on and Din. Hong Din is uh, yeah. side in that round. I'm going to go out on a limb here, guys. In spite of the height, the wingspan, and the, the clear weight advantage to Din Hong Kwan, yeah. I'll actually say I think the harder punches in this fight are going to come from Arnel Bakanahi. Exactly, because he's able to close the distance. At the same time, he's out of range when Hong Kwan begins to counter. Yeah. He just seems to have better defensive instincts. He can ride with uh, oh! nice, nice right upper. uppercut, ironically. Nice upper by Hong yeah. Kwan. And a good right hand as well. Yeah. Nice little spurt of offense there by Din Hun Kwan. Kwan with some success early in round number three of a 12 round fight. And he's doing a little better in this round. Huh? Right. But as you can see, Bakonahe has a very uh, fluid upper body mm. movement. You know, that's been effective in the previous round. Let's see. Oh, Beautiful. nice. See, they're hard shots. I didn't nice see them the coming. Body. Big shots from uh, Kwan, but you see them coming? Mm. Whereas with Arnel, I, you don't see them coming. They're quite a surprise. And they're always the most devastating shots, the one you mm -hmm. don't see, the ones you don't see. Jabs came through. But again, this is a 12 round yes. bout. So, conditioning will also play a huge part in this yeah. fight if it goes to the distance. I noticed in the first round, uh, Arnel got under a few shots. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a little bit of a pattern through these rounds that are. Uh, Oh, oh, beautiful wow. left hook there. A bit of a lead left hook like Canelo. And there's Din Hun Kwang is throwing three and four punch combinations coming forwards. This round is a back and forth. Uh, yeah, it's a battle a of round. straight in this round. Exactly. <laughs> and when uh, Bakunai covers up, he's focused. He's trying to look at that active, active upper body, but his eyes are focused on uh, Hong Kwan but Hong Kwan certainly the more aggressive guy in terms of like punch output mm. seemingly he is the uh, bigger fighter but he is the more aggressive fighter right. uh, on this fight which he's got to do because yeah. he's not as fast and he's yes. not as sharp as Arnel Bakanahe mm -hmm. almost at the end of round number three there's 10 second signifier close round I think uh, for the first time in the fight the Viet has probably got Got the uh, got the round on my scorecard, mm -hmm. but this uh, uh, three rounds is very very difficult to score. Mm. trouble scoring around the easiest way to score around is uh, ask yourself out. who would you rather be that's, that's a really good effective wow, way to score a fight that's a good good <laughs> way like to that, actually yeah, yeah. One, one, one thing that i really discovered today round four ben is really really very tricky in commentating <laughs> you could exactly. ask you something that the <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's not my intention not my intention guys <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be in yeah. that round? Of course, we are live here in the Grand Ho Trauma. Thank mm. you to our sponsors, Lordy TV, Robert Hill and VSP Promotions, yes. and of course, Cocky Buffalo Promotions. Oh. Hard shots thrown there yeah. as I was speaking. There's a little bit swelling on the left uh, cheek of uh, Arnel Bakunahe. Oh, nice right hand there. Yes. I now caught that, but it's still landing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of weight in Din Hun Kwan's shots. So Kwan 
Uh, he's doing what he should be doing at this stage in the fight, uncorking hard shots from range. You know, Staying active, active. Yeah, right? active, active. Mm -hmm. Arnell, I'd like to see get a little bit slicker, a little more proactive with his head and with mm -hmm. his hands. Although uh, all of uh, the punches of uh, Hong Kwan is uh, not going inside, but right. uh, um, but oh. do you could see the effectiveness of pressuring mm -hmm. Arnel Bakunahe? Yeah, yeah. They don't really have to land to, to score on the judges' card. Mm -hmm. so you see there, nice little left hook to the body by uh, Kwan. But uh, he's going to carry the round if he throws more punches. Big overhand right there by Arnel, but it doesn't quite land flush. Halfway through round number four on a Lode TV. It's a pretty even contest. Din Hun Kwong uh, a little busier, but not as accurate mm -hmm. with his punches. Yeah. Well, more punches, more chances of winning. Yes, right? yeah, yes. good point, Rika. <laughs> if you can't uh, beat him uh, with accuracy, at least increase your punches in number. Yeah. I really hope in the distant future we could have uh, another thing uh, with uh, Ben, uh, Rika, right. and, uh, and myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because I really, really enjoy our commentating today. Exactly. Yeah. I've had a lot of fun. I'm sure next year, right? Uh, another mm -hmm. fight either in Vietnam and certainly in the Philippines. Look forward to joining the Alore TV crew. Again, Rika Kino, Ben McCulloch, and uh, Alvinesco here at the commentating table calling your fights today at the Fortune of War. A flurry by uh, Hong. Oh, Ding. nice body work yeah, by nice Arnel Bakunahe. Good jab there by Kwan as well. Oh, oh nice upper again yeah. by Bakunahe. 20 seconds to go around number four. We've obviously got a model for the fight. It's going to be the busiest shots mm -hmm. from Kwan, the Viet, or the sharper shots by Arnel. You've got to ask, what do you like more? I like how Arnel leaps in with a punch, with a short punch actually, <laughs> that Kwan doesn't see it coming. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Some really nice stuff there. The end of round number four. I guess, uh, I know what I prefer, and that's Arnel's mm -hmm. shots. But I'm going to ask, what did the judges before prefer? Because that's really what matters. Right. Shot, sharp shots by Arnell and some nice action. Round five. From both uh, both fighters in that round. Here we go. Round number five. Big sloppy overhand right there by Din Hun Kwan. A little bit telegraphic, but he was fainting before that. So um, again, a yeah. tight, tight combinations by Arnell. Oh, oh. technically, technically that yeah. that's a knockdown. Yeah, it's yeah. a body you punch. You get punched, you fall yeah. over. That's a knockdown that the referee doesn't yep. score that Pulled way. Pulled a slip by yeah. the referee. And with the nature of the fall, actually, yeah. he landed uh, bottom first. <laughs> <laughs> Rika, uh, Ben, uh, this is probably going to be, be a battle of quantity versus quality. Yeah, yeah. I think exactly. that's a really yeah. good way to frame it, yeah. uh, Alvin. It is going to be quantity versus quality. Unless we see a knockout or a knockdown. Both of these guys are excellent fighters. Though uh, Kwan has a oh, nice right hand there by Arnell. Uh, both of these guys are excellent fighters. Exactly. Uh, it's not that likely they'll open themselves up to flush shots. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you notice, um, Hong Kwan is trying to p protect his body by lowering his guard. Mm, it looks like probably uh, feeling the shots. Yeah, from yeah. Yes. Kwan's playing a bit of possum now. The hands are down, touting, a taunting rather. Some feints there by Hong Kwan. <coughs> but the fast reflex of Arnell is just... Yeah, actually, I, th uh, yeah. Yeah. I think he's uh, well trained for this fight. Exactly. Yeah. 
Nice head movement there. <laughs> a little bit of a bull, <laughs> yeah. a bull rush right there. Now I don't think he appreciated all the weight <laughs> that Quan put on top of him. Shrugged him off. Exactly. So no one's been hit really hard in this round, but this is the first round where I've seen someone really take control. Arnell with the greater offense. He hasn't really hurt Quan at all, but uh, he's just thrown more quality punches. Exactly. And a little bit of... A Tapering from uh, Hong Kwan in terms of uh, mm. punch output here. Yeah, well, that's and what happens in a 12 round fight. You take rounds off, and it's pretty clear that yes. uh, Kwan's take this taking this round off. Arnel's happy to oblige him, piling up the points. And no mistake about it, Hong Kwan is a very, very charisma charismatic uh, fighter. Huh? Exactly. Very entertaining. Uh, yeah. As yeah. Well. Oh, nice right hand there. Good one, too. And then a clubbing uh -huh. hook by Arnel. Trying to. There's a bit of possum here. Mm -hmm. He's calling him in. Go at him. Come on. Come on, he's saying. Arnel it's won't take the bait. Exactly. And if, even if he does, Arnel has just, just has that really, really quick, quick reflexes to react accordingly. Round number six, Bakunai in the blue trunks and Hong Kwan in the black. How do you see the fight uh, after the uh, until this round? Well, it's, I think it's pretty much the same story. Uh, Arnel with the uh, more accurate shots. Uh, Hong Kwan uh, more aggression actually, more uh, punches thrown. How about you, Ben? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. Though in the last two rounds, it's uh. Arnel Bakanahi has come forward, as you see here, a hard one too, and then a follow-up right hand and a nice jab by Bakanahi. He seems to be controlling the middle of the ring for the last two rounds. How about you, Alvin? How, well, how do you see this fight, uh, the past few rounds of the bout? Uh, like, uh, I totally agree with uh, both of you. I think uh, the last two rounds... Uh, maybe, uh, in my own opinion, Ako Bakunahi has a little edge. You are right, uh, Bakunai able to roll with the uh, punches, but certainly hard punches thrown by uh, Hong Kwan, no mistake about that. Mm. I really like seeing this from Arnel. He really reminds me of Canelo when he kind of inches and shuffles forward with exactly. that kind of attitude and the swagger. Mm -hmm. You've always got a hard assignment if you're finding a skilled counterpuncher and the counterpuncher is coming forward. Exactly. Hong Kwan doesn't want to sit, settle into a rhythm where he's on the back foot. Mm-hmm. Hard like punches, that. yeah. I think he must go to the body a little bit more. Yeah, I'd like to see that as yeah. well. Good defense there. The crowd gets excited, of course, in Vietnam, but uh, none of those shots from the Viet actually landed. A little bit of rough stuff on the inside. Mm -hmm. Some rough housing from both boxers. And the referee breaks them <laughs> off. <laughs> Oh, we see Quan switch to South Pole for the first time in the fight. Right. <laughs> Maybe trying to confuse Bakunahe. Yeah. I saw a lot of sweat fly then, but yeah. I'm not sure who landed that punch. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know who no, landed that it's punch? It's a blind spot, actually. 
And based on the the, the facial expression, both of them are uh, poker <laughs> faced. So yeah, I uh, noticed <laughs> that. I was gonna say something, Rika. Both <laughs> of these guys are just frowning the whole fight. They're exactly. not giving away anything. Mean intentions yeah. from both guys. Cool customers, no emotions. Mm -hmm. I, uh, like I said, uh, I like uh, how Bakuna is doing right now. He is uh, going for the body. Exactly. I think uh, that is uh, a weakness of Hong Kwan right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice power shots from both guys. Lead right hand to the head by Bakanahi and a lead left hand to the body from the power stand uh, from the South Pole, a South Pole power shot by Kwan. Tough round to score. Definitely. Getting ready for the second half of a world title fight. Second Ho Tram, Elorde TV via VSP Promotions. Round Buffalo. seven. And the Grand Ho Tram is our venue, a beautiful venue for this amazing, amazing event. Mm. Another beautiful thing about this venue, uh, really good acoustics, especially the body shots. You can mm -hmm. hear them boom, 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 exactly. boom. Echo around the ring. It's you been hear great. Everything. Mm. So we're halfway uh, in the bout. What do you think, guys, will be the the game plan for both boxers? Because certainly you got to step at, uh, step on the gas pedal mm. at this point, right? Yeah. Well, they've both uh, they've seemed to exhibit similar styles thus far. Neither of these fighters has gotten particularly offensive, and neither of these guys has really been hit flush hard. So it'll be interesting to see what adjustments can be made in the second half of this fight. If the, if this uh, trend uh, continue, I think um, the the championship round will be very very crucial because this fight is very close in my opinion. Exactly, and when frustration sets in, and you need to 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 win those championship rounds, it's really going to test our two boxers here under a uh, tremendous amount of pressure. Yeah. So in my notes, from what I've heard from fight fans. Um, I understood that Quan was a southpaw, and yeah. uh, for the first six rounds, right. he's fought in orthodox, and it's just mm -hmm. in the last two rounds he's gone to uh, the southpaw stance. Ironically, he's back in orthodox now. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's one of his game plans. What do you think is behind that uh, decision to change stances? Well, it's like Charlie Suarez. It's just a different look. Charlie fights really well from both stances. Mm. But, uh, nice body work. Yeah, right. from both fighters, but especially from Bakanahi. Mm -hmm. It's usually uh, to change the momentum, but it didn't really bother Arnel. So exactly. I guess he's gone back right. to... Oh, oh, nice left oh, uppercut wow, there by uh, Silence. Yeah. Yeah. Wicked uppercut but from Bakanahi. Yeah. Oh, good by body shots too. Right. Good body shots. And we saw a breath there. Mm -hmm. Maybe oh, nothing. Wow. Beautiful shots Oh, now they're throwing Arnel. some bombs, guys. Able to roll with the punches yeah. is Arnel Bakonahe. Yeah. So uh, Quan's taking a big shot and Arnel's seen it and he's really dedicated the last like 30 seconds to pure body shots. As you see Quan tie up for the first first time in the whole fight. Against the ropes in the corner. Let's see what Arnel can do. And 30 I think, seconds left. I think Ben and Rika, I think uh, Hong Kwan is breathing a little bit heavy right now. Mm. Yeah. Oh. He does. But good job at actually being able to hold it together. He's and got that poker face that you right. called, Rick, huh? He seems to have recovered. Mm -hmm. Around 10 seconds to go in the round. That's definitely Arnel's round. Oh, a nice right uppercut there by Quan. Quan. Good round. Good round. Good, good round. And uh, wow, I'm excited to see the following. Yeah, that's rounds. the most fireworks we've had in this mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm.
seconds out. Five rounds to go for the world title. Arnel Bakanahi, the Sansa versus Din Hong Kwan. Round eight. Round eight, and we are live uh, in Elorda TV here at the Grand Ho Tram Strip. You're watching uh, Bakonai in the blue trunks and Hong Kwan in the black. Oh, nice there. Uh, nice left hand there by Bakonai. It's going to be a little bit dispiriting for uh, Kwan to uh, be the much bigger fighter with a lot of weight and height advantage and be mm. backed up and actually hurt to the body in a round. Exactly. Oh, but that was a beautiful counter yeah. by Hong Kwan. Nice counter left hook there by Kwan. Good jabs by Arnell. We talked about that violent chess analogy. Both of these guys showing some patience in this. The eighth round, there's five to go. Maybe tape, could be a mm -hmm. tape issue. Yeah. With so much sweat actually. It's yes, really yes. taking a toll on our <laughs> tapes. To think that uh, this is a quite a cool cold venue. Yeah, yeah a cold yeah. venue. It is a cold venue, which is great for the fighters because exactly. uh, I was in that uh, that fight at the Alorde Stadium. It was crazy hot. Crazy hot. This has got to be a welcomed venue for these two guys. Oh, you haven't been to the hottest venues in the Philippines. <laughs> oh, don't know this Rica. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, now with a little bit of momentum here. Mm -hmm. little right switch stand right. step right. there by... Uh, Kwan, he lands a right, he wears a right hand. Oh, beautiful right hand there by That Arnold. right hand really Saint connected. Sir. Right, it snapped the head of Hong mm. Kwan back. Oh. Arnell was warned against putting his head down, but... Uh, Kwan yeah. pushed it down. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> be, uh, be careful. I think the referee uh, just announced that it is a second warning on Arkel Bakunahe. For putting his head yeah. down. There's a saying in the boxing, you must take away the belt from the champion. Exactly. Yeah. Make it a convincing yes. win. Mm. Bit of a concerning pattern for the Vietnamese corner here. You don't, like I said before, you don't want to be going backwards right. against the counter puncher who's able to dictate the pace mm -hmm. because Arnell has got the faster exactly. hands and the better timing. Mm -hmm. So this really uh, doesn't work for the Viet in Quan. An unmistakable uh, defense actually from Arnell. Look at that. He just yeah. has that feel for uh, yeah. body that movement. Intuition, yeah. It's very fluid. The head movement is quite impressive. On right. On Oh, nice hook there by uh, Arnel Bakanahi. Jabs to the body and another strong lead hand to end that round. These are close rounds. Close round. Yeah, but I think uh, Arnel's starting to gain some more momentum in this mm. fight. Sharper, sharper shots. Sharper he shots. And I think uh, at the early in the fight, he wasn't as busy as Quan, but now he's, he's a lot busier. Tram strip. This uh, event down. is brought to you by Elorde TV, VSP Promotions, Cocky Buffalo, and uh, Ro Sir Robert Hill and Mampu Elorde nine. and Sir Marty Elorde. Let's see what happens in round number nine. Arnell's gained some momentum. I'd like to see Quan just uh, come forward behind a long jab and try to bring in a little, introduce or reintroduce a little more volume into the fight.
because you can't fight uh, the game of RNL when you aren't as fast and as accurate. So mm. I think the volume punching of oh. Juan was the key in the beginning rounds of, of his success. Right? We can see that, yeah, definitely. We can see Quan is tough. He just walked into a massive jab there, mate. Right. Uh, that was a stiff jab. We heard yeah. that around the ring. But uh, you're a challenger. I think uh, the Sergio Edrency is still... Uh, Arnold Bakunahe must take away that belt to Kwan. Uh, it will not give, be given to you in a silver platter. Exactly. Uh -huh. Let's see, let's see how Arnel Bakunahe takes that a belt from Hong Kwan. Hong Kwan a little bit more aggressive in this in the beginning of this round. Mm. Nice supper got there by Kwan. Sort of sneaks through the guard. Overhand right misses. I think even in a welterweight, Kwan will be a big, big right. welterweight. Yeah. Mm. He's huge. He's he is guy. huge. The size uh, difference is very apparent. But Arnel Bakuna is a natural super featherweight. You are right. Mm -hmm. Yes, those uh, punches uh, missed by Hong Kwan. Halfway through round number nine. A little more action in this round from both fighters. Nice little short left hook there. Mm -hmm. like Landed Kwan. for Hong Kwan. Mm. And Kwan's signature um, right straight and never connected uh, on this uh, fight yet. Right. Because Bakona is just so slippery. Yeah, he's slippery. It's very hard to land a straight right hand on yeah. a really talented shoulder roller, which Arnel certainly is. Kwan going for the more the greater arc, the overhand kind of right, still mm -hmm. doesn't land. Good body work there by uh, Kwan. But Arnel still coming yeah. forward. Good without, distance by Arnel. Yeah, yeah. Without that head movement uh, by Bakunai, I think the, he is in trouble. Right. Uh, the good thing is he practiced that a lot. Exactly. Hours of training and a very keen uh, reaction or reflex for Arnel Bakunai. Oh, nice, nice, sneaky little right uppercut. Yeah, like Walt Power, the CEO of the Grand Hotel <laughs> Tram said, you don't get to see all the practice these guys put in. Arnel likes that. He says, bring it on. A couple jabs of nice effective jabs Kwan. and a decent right hand there by Kwan. <laughs> 10 seconds Whoa, ago. Oh, what a body by Arnel. The thud of those uppercuts, but upper hook, upper by uh, Hong Kwan. <laughs> Bit of showmanship there by Kwan right. with the Viet, mm -hmm. which actually could be a sign of frustration. I think mm -hmm. by this point in the fight, he picked his size, height, and weight would probably uh, have Arnel slowing down, but Arnel. Enthusiasm from the Vietnamese crowd. They are These certainly the entertained. And rightly so. This has been a great fight. You've got a combination round of some hard ch -ch 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 sharp shots in round t -t 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 10. <laughs> and uh, you've, you've seen patience, body work, some good head shots, and a lot of poise from both fighters. Let's see in the proverbial championship rounds who can take this fight because it still is very close. Maybe Kwan's going to come in with some more fire in these last three rounds. I, I think uh, whoever takes this three, three uh, last round will probably win this fight. Mm. Strong finish for either of the boxers is the key, it seems. Mm. Nice right hand there. Really good right hand there by Arnell. Kwan's not hurt by it and mm. comes straight back. 
You see, it's Quan that's actually tying up, and it's also Quan exactly. who's got his back on the ropes, which is not exactly. good. Exactly. And I think uh, Quan has some difficulty punching down when Arnell mm. tries to weave and bob. Mm. S- sort of like it, it takes away the power from his punches, too. Yeah, and it's exhausting. You throw hard shots at a guy, and he's able to bump. Right. roll and deflect all the shots and it can be uh, disheartening as well as taxing physically but still it's anyone's uh, game anyone for the taking very very close uh, fight nice right Good hand there by Quan. it's one of the best shots in multiple rounds Arnel wore it well but uh, we can hear that one bounce off Arnel's head resound around the, uh, the ballroom Arnel coming forward behind that shoulder rolling style. Quan looking to mount some meaningful offense. Thus far in this round, no one's really taken it. And there you go, the switch. That was a good oh. hook by Hong Kwan. I think a body punch uh, yeah. hit Quan. Maybe. <laughs> a little bit of a Billy Joe Saunders <laughs> indication there. Quan with a nice little right hand gets over the top of the left shoulder of Arnell. And another one. Nice right hand again by Quan. And a jab by mm. Bakonahe. Aki Bakonahe had his right elbow down there. That was a big left hook to the body. Quan just threw. The Vietnamese crowd are very enthusiastic, but no one's really mm. taking these rounds. It's difficult to score. Uh, go to the distance. I, I, Seconds out. I expect a race or race or thin uh, decision on this fight. Exactly. Here we go. Championship round, round 11. Judging, right? Yeah. Ring generalship, hard, clean punches, aggression. Yeah, it's very tough to score. It's yes. Very tough to score. Uh, Both of these guys defense, have done different good right? things. Yeah, the defense, obviously, clearly, Anel Bakanahi by far. But uh, mm. on the offense in the ring generalship, it's difficult to score who's done, who's done more. And mm. also, you can't predict what the judges actually yes. think. Actually, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the ring generalship and aggression kind of like swings back and forth it does, from it both does. Uh, boxers. I'd say for the majority of this fight, probably three quarters, Arnel's controlled the ring uh, for the most part. And we see a good right hand, left hook to the body, another what hard flurry, right hand but by Good to see. Quan's unbothered though. I expected actually a little more, uh, you'd say, ferocity and focus from Quan. Mm-hmm, exactly. He's the defending champion. I thought he'd, uh, especially in front of his home crowd in Vietnam, he'd really want to stamp uh, his authority on this fight. And he'd be throwing more bombs. Perhaps he realized the defensive prowess of Arnell. It's kind of futile to throw hard shots. Actually, Ben, you, oh. you actually predicted the 11th round TKO. Right. <laughs> actually, you predicted the 11th uh, 11, 11 <laughs> round TKO. You pre- predicted that. I don't, I we'll don't see. We'll see. It. I think we're going to see it. Both of these guys have landed some really mm-hmm. good shots in this round, and neither exactly. of them look hurt whatsoever, hurt whatsoever. Maybe you are the real fortune teller. Exactly. <laughs> That's far it's you, Alvin. It's and not the me. Fights, the fighters are actually getting a little bit rougher mm. in, this, in this round. 
Yeah, they're probably frustrated. Arnell hasn't been able to hurt Quan, and Quan certainly hasn't been able to hurt Arnell. Minute to go in the second last round of this fight. Nice little angle change there by mm. Quan. A little bit, uh, <laughs> uh, a couple of mit- missed shots there, and they're now entangled, kind of roughhouse. If I was if I was Quan's corner through this fight, I'd say, come in hard. Lean on Arnell as much as you can, bully him and push him right. backwards. But Quan hasn't been able to really do that through this fight. He's trying nice to come right in hand. and out the uh, and uh, but just it's just that Arnell is just too slick mm. for that kind of style. Yes. Yeah, he's too slick, but I think uh Quan's taking this round with a little more activity. Right. right. It's Definitely. been a good round, but good round for the Viet. Good jab out to the body. Oh, good upper uh, straight by Om Kwan. They tie up to win the 11th round. Oh, beautiful left rib to the body there by the silent, uh, the silencer. Another headshot. It seems to be a very long round. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to <laughs> see. Same, same observation. Yeah. Final round. Final round of, yeah. of uh, our. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, main here event. we go. 12th and final round. This is going to be interesting. The defending champion from Vietnam versus Anil Bakanahi. Who wants it more? Who wants the IBF Asia lightweight title more? Good body shot there. Straight right hand to the body and then a straight right hand to the head. Oh. By Bakanahi and Quan comes straight back. Nice, another right hand there by Arnell. And on the ropes is Hong Quan. That right straight up Arnell was working all uh, yes. all, all fights. Quan's mm-hmm. been great this fight, he, uh, but I just haven't seen uh, quite the amount of energy and inspiration that I'd expect mm-hmm. from a defending champion. It looks like Arnell's the hungrier fighter at this point. Right, and I think it, it's really the frustration of not being able to to catch Arnell. Yeah, it's land a, flush. yeah, the a combination reeker of that uh, inability to land flush, but also perhaps the comfort of being in your home uh, on right. home territory. What's the referee say now? But I, I also, issue again. but I definitely agree with uh, Ben that uh, on this fight, uh, Hong Kwan did not uh, did not get the privilege of to bully uh, Bakunahe <laughs> because um, <laughs> he was uh, yeah sleek very uh, uh. defensive and uh, just like Canelo he uses uh, defense as an offense yeah. too that's a good way to frame it he really does it's deflating to throw hard shots and see the guy oh is that a body shot or a um, the glove uh, went across so i don't think it's a low blow uh. if we replay mm. to see i think maybe it was the shoulder so they kind of crashed right, into each other i saw the glove come through uh. not hit exactly the L- like i said aham uh has uh, so already given two warning by this referee right. and Arnell coming forward. Good upper uh, hook by uh, Hong Kwan. Yeah, Kwan, nice uppercut, nice right hand there by Arnell. 
What an exchange of punches by both fighters. Exactly. The this is great. Final minute of yeah. round 12. Flurry by Baconahe on the uh, clinch. You could sense that both fighters want to be a champion. Exactly. <laughs> Arnell's hungry. We've got yeah. a minute to go on a world title fight. Who wants it more? Reality is setting in, actually. <laughs> it's the final moments yeah. to... The final countdown. Exactly. I get tangled up on the inside. 40 seconds to go. Arnell ducks under a quan left hook. The final moments. They trade hard left hooks. Okay, referee, break them up. Let's see a flurry in the final 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, time! Interesting, oh, very interesting. <laughs> What a way to close the uh, fortunes of war. I don't want to be a judge on this fight, <laughs> Ben. Yeah, it's a tough fight to score. <laughs> exactly. It's good that we're just commentating over this event. <laughs> After 12 rounds of boxing, we now go to the scorecards, and here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Gil Robiego Co. scored about 114-113 in favor of Hong Kwan Din. Judge at ringside, Charlie Joy scored about 115-113, also in favor of Hong Kwan Din. And judge at ringside, Jung Tae Lee, scored about 116-112. He's now your winner by way of unanimous decision from Vietnam, Hong Kwan Di.
of course, Ben McCulloch is with me. And of course, Alvin Esco from Real Fight PH. Thank you guys for sharing the comment dating table with me. Pleasure, Rika. Yeah, good night, Rika. Good night, Alvin. Uh, like I said, um, I hope it will not be the last because I really yes. did enjoy our uh, trio uh, today. And um, um, we, have, we, have, we have now a time to, to eat and uh, try to unwind. <laughs> And enjoy the Grand Ho Tramps trip. Thank you guys for watching. This has been your hosts for today. Thank you for watching Elorde TV. Yeah. And uh, subscribe to Elorde TV for more boxing uh, action. Uh, not only in the Philippines, but uh, all over the world. Uh, maraming salamat po. Salamat po. That's great. That's great, Ben.
private Charlie Suarez Hi champ um, From Philippine Army yeah. From Philippine Army uh, Isa pong mapagpalang gabi uh, Sa iyo ma'am And also sa lahat ng mga taga-subaybay Sa Ilo DTD Sa lahat ng mga pre warriors ko Sa lahat ng mga uh, Sambayan ng Pilipino Sa mga ka-sparring ko At sa especially to my team uh, and coach manager Delpin Balls eh, my father and also sa lahat ng aking family uh, patuloy na sumusuporta sa akin at nanalangin sa labang ito uh, marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat napakatagal nating inintay ang uh, moment na ito Champ Charlie so anong masasabi mo quick assessment sa performance mo ngayong gabi uh, una nagpapasalamat ako sa ating Panginoong Diyos na sarili kong tagapaligtas Jesus Christ sa pagbibigay pagbigay niya sa akin ng strength, victory sa laban at pag-iingat at uh, nagpapasalamat ako dahil uh, wala mang, walang anumang mga injury na uh, nangyari sa akin at uh, maging sa kalaban ko Oo Champ, pero sa pangalawang round, ano, of course your opponent, si Defria Palulu nagkaroon ng injury in-expect mo ba itong uh, uh, ganitong pangyari early on in this bout? Um, hindi po, unexpected po kasi and then um, uh, tinatan siya ko lang first round hanggang fourth round kasi kung baka magkasalubong kami, ma-injury siya, ma-injury uh, mag ako, uh, ma matab maging tabla yung laban, maging draw, sayang naman. So hindi ko inaasahan eh. Uh, ang iniisip namin, uh, after the fourth round pataas, doon na ako babanat at doon ko na um, gawin yung mga dapat kong gawin na pinag-insayuhan namin. And of course, you have two belts yes. now. What is next for Champ Charlie Suarez? Um, ang opportunity na ibigay sa akin ng promotion at kung may mga magandang mga offer, we grab it kung ano man yun. At uh, uh, willing po kami at uh, handa lang po lagi kami. And of course, looking back at uh, 2022, satisfied ka ba sa mga achievements mo? At the end of the year. Uh, yes, uh, nagpapasalamat ako doon sa ating Panginoon dahil sa loob ng li uh, isang taon sa limang laban ko for this year is uh, yung protection, pag-iingat at uh, kalakasan na binibigay niya sa akin is patuloy pa rin. No? At nandyan yung biyaya na uh, uh, kasama ko. Five fights and two titles, Charlie Suarez. Parang wala ka ng... Uh, Kumbaga, lahat na nagawa mo ngayong 2022. What can we expect from you sa 2023? Uh, yun, uh, we're praying and hoping na yung papasok sa world ranking and then yung uh, world championship talaga yung pinaka-aim namin, ng team namin. Uh, yun talaga. Uh, and maraming salamat. We don't want to keep you further dahil alam namin it's time to celebrate, of course, our new champion. Charlie Suarez, your final words to our fans. Uh, papasalamat ako sa Philippine Army sa patuloy na pagsuporta sa akin sa uh, kay CGPE uh, General uh, Browner and also sa lahat ng mga pre warriors sa mga sa BSP promotion kay Ma'am Coco kay Lordy, eh, Lordy TV sa lahat ng mga sa buong family and mga kaibigan kay spar, sparring meet ko sa sa aking team, uh, Suarez team, and uh, sa inyo ma'am Rika, and also uh, sa iba pang mga hindi ko maibanggit, uh, marami pong salamat sa inyo. God bless us all. Maraming salamat. And the new IBF Asia uh, uh, <laughs> Super Featherweight Champion, Charlie Suarez. Yes.